fans, I think, can sense it right now. To go inbound to Weatherspoon with one. Weatherspoon puts up the three. It's no good! The Liberty Flames are still dancing. And the play to the biggest victory in school history. Georgia to inbound, gets it to AC. Deep three, pull up. He makes it in! He makes it in! Shot the Larry Blair, reverse oh, way up, up and in, and he's fouled. Man, you talk about the degree of difficulty. With two, Georgie at the buzzer. Got it! He got it! Darius McGee, a game for the agent. And Liberty wins four games in the Big South Tournament to take home the 2013 crown. Look at Mario Baxter Barrow. 25 for Colin Porter. Holmes lead. Splash. Shiloh Robinson what? with an effort play. And Liberty keeps on coming. A huge basket by Kyle Rome. Got it! Pacheco with the three. Liberty, put your dancing shoes on. Will Matthews, they let us come back for season two on a sea of red. What's up, brother? I, I can't believe it, man. Basketball starts tomorrow night. That intro gave me the uh, the old holy bumps right here. I felt like I needed to go to convocation. <laughs> Will, it is a pleasure to be back with you, uh, my friend. Uh, this is our third season of doing this, our second with the keys to the a sea of red mothership, and it is an honor. Uh, we've got a ridiculous show tonight. Uh, so many incredible guests have, have, for some reason, agreed to come on and talk some hoops with us. But, Will, I think the people want to know, how was your off season? What have you been up to? Just been busy, man. Uh, it's kind of uh, – it's always difficult for me um, to transform into uh, – or transfer from football season to basketball season. Uh, cause football now, you know, they're doing so well, they're undefeated top 25 this week. And then basketball season starts tomorrow night. So I'm, uh, I'm putting on my basketball hat, uh, and, uh, I'm looking forward to all flames all the time. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. This is of course the sea of red podcast presented as always by our guy, Jason Porter, real estate covering all of your residential and commercial real estate and leads in the Lynchburg area. I'm Nick Kirby. That's Will Matthews. We're excited uh, to be uh, with you um, here for, for this. All right. Well, Will, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, coming up, uh, we do have Kyle Rhodes, Zach Cleveland, Colin Porter, uh, Caden Matheny, Paul Nazgan, Tim Scarborough, Matt Warner, Rocco Miller, John Manson, Chad Hassan, Coach Richie McKay, Alan York, and maybe Richie Longshot. So a uh, decent, decent crew with us tonight. Uh, before we get to some of those interviews where we'll kind of chat and get you ready and, and excited for the season, I uh, wanted to go through uh, some of the what we're expecting this season. This is uh, the projected uh, Liberty starting lineup. Um, uh, the official media guide actually has Shiloh Robinson or Zach Cleveland in the center spot, so maybe a little bit of intrigue there. Uh but of course, Colin Porter finished uh, the year very, very strong. Um, played really, really well in uh, the A Sun tournament, as did Kyle Rode. Uh, Joseph Van Zant looking for a big leap from him, and then of course Shiloh Robinson uh, coming back just like Kyle Rode, fifth season senior. Uh, so that's big to see. And then Caden Matheny is the big maybe wild card here, uh, the transfer from Bowling Green, uh, expecting a lot of scoring from him. Well, what kind of look uh, stands out to you as you kind of look at the projected lineup here for the Flames this season? Man, just the leadership with Rode and Robinson. Um, as Richie Longshot says, these guys are uh, 26, um, maybe 36 by now. I don't know. You know, Zach Cleveland really, like, put on a show at the end of the season last year, really stepped up, really showed a lot of development, I thought. Um, but I think just, you know, Robinson brings that, intangible leadership factor he's been here for uh quite a while now and uh we've all been you know waiting for him to 
uh, breakout. And uh, hopefully that's this is uh, it for his uh, sen- his last his senior season and he gets it done. Yeah, we've definitely saw at times Shiloh have some really huge, uh, you know, performances. Uh, last year, he scored 27 points in a game uh, against North Alabama. So we know he's capable of of maybe that extra gear. Uh, of course, every, every the biggest story. Indiana Pacers. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how this lineup shakes out without him. What does Shiloh Robinson look like without Darius McGee? What does Kyle Rode look like without Darius McGee? What does Colin Porter look like without Darius McGee? That'll be, I think, maybe the, the most interesting storyline to track early in the season. Um, and, and I think we've at times saw that those guys are all capable of a little bit more. And um, uh, one thing I talked when, when we'll have our interview with Coach McKay coming The late in the shot clock, you could always count on on Darius McGee being able to throw up a shot at the end of the shot clock, and, and sometimes some of the most ridiculous shots he would make look routine. You're not going to have that this year. That might be kind of a struggle early in the year, but I wonder if when we get later into the season, if maybe that'll help Liberty run some better offense. What's your thoughts on that, Will? Well, you're muted. Yeah, you hear me now? Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to look at what this team is with the turnover of Darius McGee. How how's it all gonna How's it all gonna flow? How's it all gonna go? Fun, you know, function. Is it gonna go back to what we saw with McKay regimes uh, when he first got here, and just a more balanced scoring attack? Um, you know, uh, who's going to be the person that steps up? Kyle Rhodes, second leading scorer on the team last year. And, you know, does he get a lot of those shots uh, to him? Um, I think it's going to be fun to watch to see who's that person. It's like there's the, there's this vacuum and there's this void that somebody's going to have to step into as a in a leadership role. Yeah, and then uh, Caden, Caden Matheny, he's a guy that um, – I'm really, really looking forward to to watch play. Uh, I've watched a lot of his highlights this offseason. Uh, he's a guy that can really, really score. Heard some really good things about him defensively as well. Uh, he just, from everything I'm hearing, um, and obviously at this point of the year, it's all, everything is is, is rosy and, and everything's great when you're coming into a season. Uh, there's mm-hmm. never anything bad to say about anything. And then you get into the grind of a season and things change. But he, he feels like a guy that's going to really seamlessly fit into this rotation, help with the scoring, and uh, I just I cannot wait to uh, uh, to watch him play. Um, let's look at our projected bench. Uh, we we feel like these three guys here at the top are pretty much locks to be in the rotation at least early in the year. Brody Peebles he he led the team last year in three point field goal percentage. Uh, he can obviously really score from from three. Um, going to need that this year. Zach Cleveland, as we already mentioned, uh, the Liberty Media guy, as we said, actually has him listed as a possible starter. So he might be finding his way into the starting uh, uh, lineup um, early in the season. And then Xander Yates, uh, a transfer from Creighton. Obviously, you know, you're talking about the uh, the Big East. Um, he was a walk on and uh, uh, didn't play a lot there, but obviously was talented enough to make that team. And then the last spot, that's where we have a question mark. Who's going to be that last guy that maybe kind of cracks in the rotation? Obviously, we have three really talented freshmen in Curtis Blair, um, Caillou, uh, and then um, uh, Jalen Davis. We're expecting Caillou probably will redshirt uh, just with the, um, the seven-footer with the language barrier and, and and all that it takes just to come play basketball in the United States. But, but will Curtis Blair and will um, – uh, Jalen Davis, will they red shirt or will it be someone else that kind of slides into that rotation? Well, what are you kind of looking for here in the, with, with the, the bench going into the season? Yeah. McKay always whittles it down, right? Uh, expect in the non-conference to see a lot of these guys get some playing time, see what Curtis Blair has and Xander Yates and 
um, Jalen Davis. And, um, you know, it may be that Caillou red shirts. Uh, we don't know how he is on the defense. We, we don't know really how any of these guys are the defense on the defensive end and how they're taking to the pack line right now. So I think that's going to be the major factor is where are they at defensively? How do they fit in with the pack line? And then we'll see really who gets some, a bit of the play in time, whether they're coming in for Van Zant, um, you know, on some possessions and um, or with Van Zant, per, uh, I should say, on some of those uh, key defensive possessions late in the games. Good question here. I uh, appreciate Lucas Holman uh, joining us tonight. Uh, asked, do you think Gabriel McKay could play? I think he'll definitely get a chance early in the year, especially, you know, our first game against uh, Mid-Atlantic Christian. I would imagine everyone on the roster will play in that. Um, everyone will get an opportunity. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like I said, that that spot's up for grabs. Lucas also asked about Ben Sutherland. I know John Manson reported that he was in a, a walking boot recently, so not sure about his status um, health-wise. Uh, he was a talented player coming into last year that ended up redshirting. And there's also uh, uh, Bryson Spell, didn't play a lot last year, but also some some talent. Got some size um, at six foot nine, but can also stretch the floor a little bit. I, we we really do not know who that last spot is, and that'll be one of the most fascinating things to me that I'll be watching. Maybe not as much tomorrow night in Liberty's opener against Mid Atlantic Christian, but against Charlotte uh, next Friday. Who's that guy that that takes that and uh, who's redshirting? Because we'll find out tomorrow who's redshirting. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll know quickly. McKay said it could be one guy, could be two guys, could be all three. He didn't really give us a whole lot of uh, um, um, clues um, into that. But before we get to, we're going to go through Liberty's schedule um, and then a, just a quick kind of overview of Conference USA. We're going to play part one of our interview with head coach Richie McKay. Uh, this is uh, about two minutes and 15 seconds of my interview with, with coach. I uh, got another about 10 minutes that will play towards the end of the show. That's a teaser. So we want you to stick around for the whole, the whole shebang, but here's our first part of our, the non-conference schedule. I know you came into last year, all, all guns a blazing, uh, how difficult it was. I saw your non-conference schedule. I was just thrilled. Do you feel like maybe there was a sense of mid majors helping out other mid majors after some of the difficulties that you shared last year? Uh, I think it's more than a sense. It's a desperation. Like it, again, the, in the Power Five conferences, you see a, 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 a tendency to avoid playing games that aren't quadrant one or quadrant four, uh, just because of the net ranking and how, and, and that is not the sole indicator or uh, metric that they use in the selection process, Nick. But it certainly is the one that gets the most attention, uh, more so even than the coaches poll or the media poll. Your net ranking is how you're defined uh, publicly. So uh, in order to manipulate those metrics, coaches, uh, conference associate commissioners and basketball ambassadors are they're telling those uh, those, hey, we have enough conference games and they're it's upwards to 18 to 20 in the in the, the top six leagues in the country, 20 conference games. And then they have a, an MTE or a made for TV tournament. So there's another two or three more. And then they have a challenge, whether it's the, well, what was formerly the big ACC big 10. So they, they already have 24 and 25 games that are built into their schedule. That will be no lower than quad twos typically. So now they have to have the, revenue for their home games and that's five or six by games there's no room for us so we we had to we had to beg borrow and plead for someone to, to play us and i get that it's uh and i don't mean to compliment ourselves it's just it's just the way of the mid-majors now well i'm excited I, I think there's a lot of really awesome games grand canyon coming to liberty arena is a really good game sure. um, obviously fau uh you know they, they played the final four last year and charleston really great program so Definitely excited for that. All right. Well, uh, as, as we look towards the the schedule this year, I'm really excited about this this non conference schedule. Uh, some of the highlights include the Myrtle Beach Invitational. We'll show you that bracket in a minute. Uh, of course, the Field of 68 tip off. Uh, if you don't know what the Field of 68, that is a uh, a college basketball network um, started by um, um, Rob Doster. 
formerly of NBC Sports. Um, they do really, really cool uh, uh, basketball coverage on YouTube with like nightly shows and that. They've kind of started um, sponsoring some games and some small little like tournaments like this. So Liberty play FAU, of course, in the Final Four last year, and then Charleston in that. Uh, of course, Liberty playing Alabama again, and then conference play begins um, on on January sixth. Well, what non conference games are you really looking forward to? What games are you maybe excited about? Man, that Myrtle Beach tournament. Um, I'm I'm hoping and planning to go to some of those games. I think that's going to be a good test of you know who we are. Um, I think there's going to be some growing pains in the non conference. I think it's going to take it's going to take some figuring out who we are. Uh, without Darius McGee. So uh, I'm not measuring the team in the non-conference on success other than just growth and, and development and see where they are. Um, but I think there's going to be good. Alabama, I, you know, we know how good they've been in recent years. And, um, man, always having a, a P5 caliber like Alabama team on the schedule always is going to look good um, just by perception if you can pull out a win there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to. It. I think there's a couple of games that are really. I think that Craig Ken game is uh, really sneaky good. Um, the the FAU game that's almost assuredly going to be a quad one game um, as we kind of get later in the year. Uh, you just have to be. That's a true road game, so you only have to be top seventy five for that to be quad one. So that's the one game that you feel for sure will be a quad one. Alabama probably is a quad one. That's technically considered a neutral game. You only have to be in the top 50 for that. Feel pretty mm -hmm. confident that Alabama will be. So those will be probably the two, I guess, most important. If you're talking about having any shot of, of, of stealing an at-large bid, um, you'd have to take one of those games. I don't think we're really looking at that as really something that that's a likely possibility this season. But all these games, you know, are, are playing for um, your positioning should you win the Conference USA tournament which we'll get to that in just a second here. Um, but, but hey, you know, all these games are going to be really important in terms of, you know, if you get into the tournament, are you a 12 seed or are you a 14 or 15 seed? And, and obviously, you're just your odds of being able to advance um, increase greatly. Uh, we're just about seven minutes away from uh, starting some of our, our interviews. Kyle Rode and Zach Cleveland scheduled to come on first. Before we go any further, I do want to make sure I ask and I plead with you, if you are watching on YouTube, Hit that like button, um, and also make sure you subscribe to a Sea of Red. Uh, that kind of stuff really helps the a Sea of Red brand uh, hopefully continue to grow, um, as I might have lost Will. So really, I need some likes, definitely, for sure. Maybe I, maybe Will didn't have enough likes, and that's why he bolted on us. I'm not really sure, uh, but but please like and subscribe to a Sea of Red. I would really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, again, looking at this, this Myrtle Beach Invitational, very fascinating. Starting off with Furman. Um, and you're going to play the winner of Wichita and Coastal. This is a tournament that I think is very winnable for Liberty uh, to win the whole thing. Um, as you kind of look through it, um, this is be uh, not that not that far off uh, here in just a couple weeks. Uh, so Liberty's going to kind of have to really kind of I think uh, get into um, a little bit of the grind before that starts. Uh, I want to kind of look through Conference USA um, as we might have Will back. Yeah, here we go. There's William. He's back. Uh, I want to kind of look through Conference uh, USA uh, and, and kind of what. <laughs> um, kind of looking through Conference USA. We'll, we'll dive in a little bit more into Conference USA when we get a little bit closer uh, to conference play. Um, and, and obviously, we need to see a lot of these teams play to kind of see how they, they shake out. There's so many transfers um, that, that make this league, I think, really fascinating. But Liberty tied with um, Middle Tennessee for. Uh, the top spot. I know, Will, you remember old coach Nick McDermott at uh, UNC Asheville. He's at Middle Tennessee. Yeah. He took the, over that job, and they really, really struggled for the first couple of years. But last year, they took a huge leap. Um, interested to see if they can continue that up. Um, I, I checked this. I checked this. In McDermott's last year, uh, Liberty won three straight games against uh, against him. So uh, McDermott, I'm sure, and uh, – Going to have his boys uh, itching it to face uh, uh, Richie McKay. Western Kentucky, they have just an incredible atmosphere on the road. Really looking forward to those games. Um, and then Louisiana Tech, they got a couple of really, really good players. Isaiah Crawford, the preseason player of the year. So, again, we're not going to jump too far into 
this league because we don't know how it's really going to shake out. I want to see a little bit more of that. But when we get a little closer to conference play, we'll kind of break that a little bit, tell you what we're seeing. I try to watch as many um, conference games as I possibly can. But, Will, as you're looking at CUSA, what kind of stands out to you? Man, uh, I, th I think there's going to be a lot of disparity in the top of the league and the bottom of the league. Uh, New Mexico State is in shambles after – Everything that occurred around the shooting last year, the hazing incident, um, they don't have any returning players from their team last year. Um, so, and they have a new coach. So it's a completely new program almost. Um, I think there's a lot of talent that's going to be at the top. Um, I know Sam Houston State's got some transfers. I think Louisiana Tech, um, I think they might be a little bit better than advertised, but I still think, I still think, Liberty, even without Darius McGee, is going to be at the top at the of the standings come year end. Um, right off. The Roku app for that to be able to watch it, but I'm really fascinated to see how they stack up. I think Colorado State 74th in Ken Palm. Uh, so I think that'll be a really good test to kind of see where they're at. Um, but here's kind of the, the schedule. New Mexico State, like you just mentioned, uh, good luck, boys. They're playing at Rupp Arena uh, against Kentucky uh, to start off their season. Um, and then uh, FIU's playing uh, in-state uh, UCF. They're a top 100 Ken Palm team. Um, there's some really good games tomorrow night in, in CUSA. Um, uh, Western Kentucky or uh, Middle Tennessee's playing Northern Kentucky. Uh, that's a team picked, predicted to win. Um, the Horizon League, um, and then kind of the rest of the week, some other games. Uh, Utah Valley, who Liberty will see later in the year, they play uh, at Sam Houston State. That is on on uh, Thursday. Middle Tennessee, they got a really challenging opening week, planning up against Stephen F. Austin, Western Kentucky against Wichita State. So some really good, really really cool uh, games this week. Kind of get we'll get a good sense and a good uh, a good gauge of uh, the conference. And then lastly, before we get into our interviews here in just a second, uh, CUSA did release their, their bracket of how the tournament is going to look. Um, I actually asked Coach McKay about this. Uh, you'll hear in, our, in my interview with him later on. But uh, it, it's all neutral floor, so that's going to be really fascinating to see how that plays out in, in, in the, the season. Of course, you're not really playing for as much if you're seeded one through six uh, because you've don't really have a huge advantage. Uh, could see some interesting things late in the year. Maybe a team tanks to avoid playing a hot team. Maybe they tank that last game. You could see that. But the one fascinating thing, John Manson pointed this out, is the one and two seeds. So they would play on March 13th, and then they get a day off on March 14th, and then they play in the semifinals on March 15th, while the four, five, three, and six have to play on the 14th and the 15th back-to-back. -back. So there is an off day as maybe some sort of reward. Um, so that is interesting. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get to some of our interviews. Uh, we got some really good ones. We're going to have Kyle Road and Zach. All right. Joined now by Kyle Road, Zach Cleveland. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Welcome to the Sea of Red podcast. Kyle, we'll start with you, my guy. Fifth year senior, how you feeling? Day away from opening night. Yeah, man, just super, super excited to be back on the show and back for another year at Liberty playing basketball. So uh, we were at the tailgate yesterday, and Zach reminded me that uh, I'm four years older than him, so really feeling old there. Uh, but no, just super grateful to be around another great group of guys, and uh, I think we got, I think we got a really good, really good team. Will, you want to go ahead? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Zach, um, how was your, uh, in your estimation, um, how was your first year? How do you feel about um, the team coming back this year? Uh, I think the first year, my first year was a great experience to get a little taste of a, a conference championship and what it's like to be there. But, you know, that always that always leaves you wanting more. And so I think it was, we got a lot of experience. Young guys got a lot of experience and Having the vets last year, like Kyle, Darius, Blake, those guys to, to lead the way, uh, gave us a lot of good, good experience. 
Zach kind of felt like you played some of your best basketball towards the end of the season. Uh, do you really feel like that maybe is giving you a little bit of a heads up uh, kind of coming into this new season? Uh, definitely. I think uh, we got a good system here. It takes a little bit to learn. And so uh, I think the more, the more experience, the more reps you have, the better, the better fit you are to play. And so uh, I think the last year, I, like I said, I had a good experience and uh, ready to go this year. Hey, I'm here for the hard hitting questions, guys. Um, so for both of you, I know there's been a lot of controversy with um, Taylor Swift being played at the football stadium this year, but it seems to be working. Are you guys for or against Taylor Swift being played at Liberty Arena? Uh, be careful. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, if we, if we go undefeated, I'm definitely saying four. <laughs> you know, football's undefeated, so it must be working. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at it. <laughs> Uh, this question will be for both of you guys as well. Uh, as we kind of look at, I know Conference USA, uh, I'm sure you guys haven't really got into all the uh, the, the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, is there any any teams that, that for each of you really stand out as someone you're really looking forward to playing, maybe an arena that you're looking forward to uh, uh, going and playing at? Yeah, I think growing up in Kentucky, uh, we would always do kind of team camps at different sites, and Western Kentucky's always had a – rich basketball history and so they just being from Kentucky they have a great arena and great fan base and um, get, getting to go to Huntsville for the media day and meeting some of the other coaches and, and players have a lot of respect for uh, all of them in the league and I think it's going to be a great basketball conference for this year and um, I think we're going to be ready for the jump. Yeah I think being as you guys know being basketball junkies uh, it's fun to travel and play in a new arenas like we get to travel to New Mexico State for uh, Texas. So just being in, getting to check out new places is just, it's, it's awesome. So is there going to be, um, you know, like what, what's the, like, I guess, what's the talk? I mean, you guys uh, are in a new conference. Um, it's a little bit of a different team, but all teams in the conference USA are a little bit different this year. So, you know, what is the talk as far as like expectations? Um, I mean, I guess I know the expectation is always a championship and going dancing, right? But, you know, what are some of the like checkpoints of uh, growth and development that you guys are uh, looking for and that the coaching staff is kind of stressing this year? Yeah, I, we play Mid-Atlantic Christian tomorrow, so that'll be, that'll be step one. Yeah. Um, then we have, I think, 15 games after that before we get to conference play. So, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, we're, we're just taking it day by day, man. Like like you said, the standards are standard here at Liberty. Um, and and I think the, the way we do it here, like – we're not crippled by chasing championships or um, chasing just accolades or awards. I think we do a really good job of focusing on what we can control in the process. And we'll, and we believe in that process. We'll, we'll get what it gets. And if that's a conference championship and back to March Madness, and then uh, that's what God had for us. Hey, man, Zach, what's your thoughts on the? Oh, sorry, Zach. What was your thoughts on the kind of the expectations coming into this year? Yeah, I think, like Kyle said, I think every 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 team's goal is to win a national championship, and so. But our coaches do a good job of kind of taking it day by day and uh, just using every game, including tomorrow, as a day to get better, because uh, it's a long ways away and a long season. But uh, when you kind of keep short term goals of getting better every day, whether it's tomorrow's game, practice in five days, just every day getting better is will will lead us to. Where, where, where we want to go. Yeah, my bad. I had a preemptive amen um, <laughs> on some of those responses. But, hey, um, just looking back at yesterday, um, you know, does uh, do you guys keep up with, like, Darius and, like, what he's doing and, um, you know, kind of what his uh, status in the league is and all that stuff? Yeah, D Darius does a great job reaching back out to us. Like, um, he put me and Shiloh on a group chat uh, this past weekend. It was just like, hey – just enjoy this last year, man, because it goes faster than the previous four combined. Um, and I know he had his first, I think, scrimmage yesterday. Um, so, so he does a great job checking in. And I, I, the mark he left on this program goes far, far bigger than just what he did on the court. Like he pours into everybody, whether you're a freshman, recruit, manager, player. So, uh, yeah, he, we uh, we keep up with him as well.
Yeah, definitely. I, I second that just in the way of that. He he really doesn't have to reach out at the where he's at, how much he's done. He doesn't have to. And he did the same thing reaching out. I think he probably reached out to every guy uh, just about just getting ready for the season, keeping your mind right. And so I think it just shows everyone knows how, how humble he is and uh, how much of a, a good guy he is. So. How are the new guys fitting in? Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Caden Matheny, uh, probably I know the Liberty Media Guide. I'm not I'm not spilling secrets here. I list him as a probable starter. Um, I know you got some other guys, Xander Yates. How have those guys and, and the freshmen uh, kind of fit in so far? Oh, yeah, I I think they've been great additions, uh, especially on and off the court. Uh, they fit right in. I, I'd say they are a little, little shy, but now fi- finally we're. We're getting we're getting some some personality out of them, and uh, Xander can really shoot it. Uh, the freshmen are really talented, and they're they're going to make a big impact on this program. And Caden Caden's a baller. So. Yeah, exactly what Zach said. Like we, the guys in our program, like um, if you get an opportunity to play here, like you're a great guy off the court, and you're a great player. So just coaches did an unbelievable job, and. And just adding pieces, and, and they're going to do a great job impacting this program on and off the court. Well, you got any other ones? Uh, no, man, uh, not for me. Uh, just uh, really looking forward to the season, looking forward to how you guys, um, you know, come together as a team. I know there's a, a you guys are a part of like a brotherhood, right? And so, um, we we love that about Liberty uh, basketball. We love that about the university. We love that about you guys. And you guys are so easy to pull for. Um, Kyle, like my, I've got an 11 year old son who looks up to you, man. So, um, you know, and uh, Zach, like he he loves watching you ball out in the uh, at the conference tournament and the NIT and all that stuff. And so uh, we're just we're really pulling for you guys and uh, looking forward to um, what kind of season you guys have. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. I got. I got one last question for each of you. Uh, Kyle, you shot 40% from three last year. Uh, with, with Darius not taking all the threes, you think you can get up a few more this year and keep, uh, keep that percentage up? Yeah, with, with guys like Zach passing the ball like they do and Colin and Caden, hopefully we get a couple more up. But now, whatever whatever we need, man. Like uh, We got such an unselfish group, and, and every given night, especially with this team, we got – probably seven, eight guys that could go in double figures easily. Um, so my teammates give me the ball. I'll make sure I can shoot it if I'm open. So. <laughs> and, and Zach, last question for you. Do you have any like um, goals of, of, of things? Maybe not like I want to average this amount of points or, or some goals of ways that you can help the team this year that you're kind of looking at maybe, I don't know, tracking and things like that. Uh, I hate to give you a cliche answer, but we, we just want to win. And uh, that whatever that is, some nights it's going to be different. Some nights it's going to be rebounds. Sometimes it's going to be guarding the five man. Sometimes it's going to be it's going to be different things every night. And so whatever that is, I'm I'm willing to do it. And I think that's what makes us so special as a team here is we got guys that will, will sacrifice points for getting some other guys open. And I think that's what makes us special. So I'm I'm looking forward to do that. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. Really appreciate you coming on. Hopefully we can catch up some other times. Uh... Uh, throughout the season. Can't wait for the season to get started tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. All right. All right. On the other side, Colin Porter and Caden Mathis. All right. Oh, I think I might have the wrong... Had the wrong yeah. Caden on there. <laughs> hey, guys, how we doing? Uh, happy opening day, Eve. Uh, how are you guys feeling uh, uh, about less than 24 hours away from tip-off? Caden, you got to open us up. <laughs> All right, I got it. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking forward to it. Um, I mean, especially being with this new group, uh, it's been nothing but special things ever since I got here the first day. So I'm excited to get out on the court with these with these uh, with these guys that I can call my brothers. Yeah, um, you know, less than 24 hours. We've been going at it since June. So uh, there's just a different kind of excitement for tomorrow. And I think that's what college basketball is all about. That's what we dreamed of as kids. And now we get to live that out. So we're all uh, we're all excited for the preparation we put in and 
hopefully uh, just what what gets to happen tomorrow, whether there's going to be some ups and downs, but we get to experience together. So it'll be sweet. Man, we're uh, we're looking forward to y'all playing, uh, watching you guys on, um, you know, all every step along the way this year. Um, Colin, what's it uh, like when you, you know, after your first season and, um, you know, when you start getting back to practice and getting around the guys and stuff like that, uh, what's it like trying to pick up the pack line defense again? And Caden, how are you, how do you feel like you're adjusting to it? Um, I mean, we started back in, we came together as a team with the new guys in June, but I mean, our spring list started uh, in April. So we had a fresh uh, few weeks off as soon as we lost to Wisconsin, but we were right back at it. So I don't think the pack line really never left. Um, like right now we're taking it. Uh, we work on different things within the pack, but that's just who we are as a team. That's what Coach McKay has always been about, and that's what we're going to continue to be about. So we'll just keep learning new things, and each game will bring different difficulties and different challenges that we'll get to see and get better at as the season progresses. Yeah, just like Colin said, I mean, we've been – I've been learning this this system since June now, and uh, I've been blessed to have some really great leaders on this team, Kyle, and even though Colin's – um, only a sophomore. He's a veteran in himself with the minutes he got last year. Um, and they've been they've been a phenomenal, phenomenal guys to look up to and teach me the the new system as well as the coaches. Um, so they've they've made the transition as smooth as possible. Caden, uh, first off, tell us a little bit about your game, what what you'll bring to Liberty, and also why did you choose to come to Liberty and transfer from Bowling Green? Yeah, I mean, first, the uh, Liberty is just, it's a special place. And uh, I didn't really know how special it was until I actually got here. And uh, it's proven, it's proven that and then some. Uh, just the the type of guys that, that are on the team. Uh, when I came on my recruiting visit, I uh, I really saw how, how real they are and uh, how rooted in their faith they are as well. Um, and that was a big, big part in why I wanted to come here. Um, and what I can offer for the team is just coming in and, just doing what they've been doing for the past five years and just trying to continue that and uh, being a, a team first guy um, and just wanting wanting the, t the team to succeed more so than, than an individual. Um, and I'm all bought in for that. Caden, we're excited that you're a flame, man. Um, any, uh, any good things to do in Lynchburg that you found so far? Any like favorite restaurants or like uh, hangout spots or anything like that? I mean, I think it would be wrong for me not to say County Smoke. I mean, that, that bar is pretty crazy. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, uh, Colin, uh, at the end of last year, you obviously had a huge game against Eastern Kentucky uh, in the A-Sun semifinals. 25 points, 5 of 9 from 3. You forced that huge shot in the A-Sun championship game against Kennesaw State. One of the most cold-blooded shots I've ever seen a Liberty basketball player take. It felt like at the end of the year, you became, I don't want to say just more confident, because I think you always play with the confident, but it felt like you played a little bit more free at the end of the year. Do you feel like that's a fair assessment? Um, yeah, I would say that's fair. And uh, you had to think about the teammates, or the teammate, especially that I had Shane in the backcourt with me, with Darius. I mean, their defenses, it was it was scheme to take him out of the game. Sometimes that would leave me uh, wide open, and I had to take it, so... We're going to have a little bit of that again this year. I mean, we got Caden Matheny in the backcourt with me, Brody coming off the bench and or whatever we're going to do. So, I mean, we have a great, great backcourt, uh, great frontcourt with Zag, Kyle. We have so many versatile weapons that, I mean, they have to pick and choose some nights. And towards the end of the season, I, be, I believe that they are trying to take Darius out and it allowed me to just be open a, a few times. And I was uh, thankful enough I got to hit some of those shots. So, I think that's what I was – really happening uh, towards the end of the year. Well, hey, that's a good point because, um, you know, you, there, there's a little bit of turnover on the roster. You know, Darius is not there and, um, you know, some others that, that have transferred out. But, I mean, how do you – Colin is a, kind of a, a second-year uh, pro. Um, how do you feel like the chemistry is coming along with some of the new guys? And, uh, you know, Caden's a transfer. He's not a freshman, but you've got some freshmen on the, the team coming up this year. Um, every, every, uh, newcomer has brought a different, uh, aspect to our culture and our locker room. And it's been great just to experience that every day. I mean, we're spending hours together and, uh, like we want to stay after late and 
talk and chat it up like no one's trying to get out of the gym early like we love spending time and doing life with one another so like Caden for example like he's been great for our locker room he's a leader he's been in it for this is his fourth year playing college basketball that's special uh, Xander Gates he's played at the highest level um, each one of our freshmen are unique in their own ways and they uh, they can put a smile on our face and they're challenging us each and every day on the on the basketball course so we have a great group of guys coming in and they've been able to add to our culture more than some like some of the returners have they've been right up there with us so it's been special this question is for both of you guys uh obviously you're you're i know your focus is all on mid-atlantic christian tomorrow night was there any any game in particular that you're really looking forward to either a gym that you're going to play at or, or an opponent that you play this year that you were just really excited about when you saw it on the schedule uh i mean our goal right now is to just hopefully win a win the conference USA. So I think that, you know, we are just taking one game at a time. We have mid Atlantic tomorrow, Charlotte after that at Charlotte, like there's a lot of great games and uh, it'll be challenging each and every night. It's division one basketball. So it's going to, it's going to be special and it's going to be fun. So we just got to take one game at a time, but we have some great games on the schedule that everyone is looking forward to. And, you know, I can't even pick out one because we have a lot of great teams on there. So it'll be nice. Hey, yeah, and you guys, you guys play Florida Atlantic that you know was in Conference USA at one point and a Final Four team ranked in the top twenty-five. Uh, is there like a little bit of extra motivation when you gotta get a when you see somebody like that on the schedule? I mean, I think, I mean, obviously, I haven't been here uh, in the past, but um, it's a it's Liberty's a winning program, and uh, the last five years uh, this. This team is is up there for like the FAUs, and that's I think when we look at an FAU that we believe like this team can achieve something like they did like they did last year. Um, that's our ultimate goal is to make the tournament and make a deep run, and uh, we believe we got the guys to do it. We believe we have the coaches to do it. Um, so when we look at FAU, that's obviously something that that we look at that we can accomplish. Kaden, uh, so you played in the the MAC. Uh, maybe a pretty similar league to Conference USA. I feel like if you're looking at, you know, the Ken Palm rankings of the different conferences, they're they're probably a more similar league. Do you feel like that gives you maybe any sort of edge in, in terms of just kind of knowing kind of what the conference feels like? Um, I don't know if I would say that, but obviously playing college basketball for three years, um, I kind of know what it's like. Um, I have that experience to kind of rely on. Um, I don't know how uh, Conference USA will be, obviously, um, but it's, we're definitely we're definitely excited for the change. We're excited for the new conference, and uh, we believe there's some really good teams in that conference um, that'll battle us and test us. Um, and we're really really looking forward to it. Caden, uh, last one for me: um, Is there like one or two or three guys that maybe you could point to on this team that has kind of helped your like? transition to Liberty a little bit uh, smooth? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at one of them right there. Uh, Colin's been – he's been right uh, my right-hand man uh, about the, in the backcourt. Um, he's – man, he's really fun to play with, um, but a better person off the court than on the, on the court. Um, he's, he's just a – he's a real dude, real guy. Um, and I, I love him as a brother, as a teammate. Um, and also, obviously, Kyle Road, he's the best leader I've ever experienced in my in my life. Uh, man, that dude's special. And I know how much he means to Liberty. And uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to try our best to make his last year his last year count because, man, he's he's done so much for this program. And we know that. And then, I mean, I would probably say Shiloh, too, like his he's a f fifth year guy. Um, he loves to he loves to pick on me a little bit, which is which is kind of funny. Um, but he's quiet too, so when he starts to talk a little bit, it's it's awesome. Um, but yeah, we're we're really dedicating this year to to those two guys. Um, they mean they mean the world to us, and I know I haven't been here, but I can see what they've done for this program. Um, so this 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 year is for those two. All right, I got one last question for each of you guys. Then we'll get to uh, our guy Paul Naz again. Colin, you got any sort of goals or anything you in particular are really trying to um, look to accomplish, maybe not individually, but this year? 
Yeah, we, I think we've both hinted at it, but I just I really want to make the NCAA tournament and see what can happen wherever you get a, you get to the dance, and uh, I feel like there's a lot of magic that can happen. So, I mean, we're we're playing for the Lord above, and not just ourselves, but I think we have something special and unique that uh, the world can see if we can if we can get there, and if it's uh, the the world's or Lord, the Lord's will. So. Follow up on that real quick, Colin. Did did Kennesaw State's performance in the NCAA tournament where they they had Xavier on the ropes? Did that kind of make you guys go, "Wow, we could actually you know, really compete in this thing"? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think that we ever thought that we couldn't. Well, it was a one point game at Kennesaw, a crazy environment, a really good team, really good coaching staff. I mean, they came uh, ready to ready to play, and uh, I mean, they beat us so. They had a chance, you know, they, I think they were beating Xavier like the whole game and it slipped away at the end. But, you know, it's it's a it's a special, special team that we have here. And just seeing what they did and like what FAU did, um, what the team, the beat, the, te- the team that beat Purdue last year. I mean, there's so many just teams that can really everyone's division one. We're all the division one level so we can all play. And if you just get to that, get to the dance, I mean, anything can happen. So that's just that's our goal. And that's what we're fighting for each and every day. All right, Katie. My last question is going to hype you up a little bit here. I hope uh, you had some pretty big scoring performances last year. Twenty-eight against Norfolk State, but one that really stands out to me as a guy who lives in Ohio. You dropped twenty-five uh, against the Ohio Bobcats, five of nine from three. You were the Ken Palm MVP of the game. What was it like on that January seventh game last year? That that just uh, you had a great performance that night. It's taking me back now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a good game. Um, obviously, uh, our record wasn't wasn't like we wanted it to be. Um, but I'm just I'm excited for for this new journey with it with this team. Um, but my shot was feeling it that game, and uh, I definitely nine threes. I shot nine threes. He said, "Yeah, I was putting them up." So I, <laughs> maybe I should have shot a little less. <laughs> five, five of nine. I I think I think that 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 tracks anywhere well guys appreciate it uh we're gonna have a quick word from ironclad coffee then we'll be right back with paul naz again thanks Virginia's best and most flames friendly coffee comes from ironclad coffee roasters ironclad roasting serves up their beautiful beans at two cafes in richmond where you can enjoy the craft roasted specialty beans anywhere in the country by visiting www.ironcladcoffee.com place your order there and it will be directly shipped to your doorstep whenever you find yourself in the capital of the commonwealth pay them a visit at one of the two cafes in the richmond area Iron Class owners, the O'Rourke family, are proud Flames Club members and season ticket holders. And now they'll please sponsor the podcast from the CRA. Hop over to www.ironcladcoffee.com now to get your Virginia's best specialty coffee headed your way. All right. Well, this is just flying by. Paul Naz, what is up, guys? How you doing? (laughs) Will, Nick, great seeing you guys again. Missed you guys. What up, Nas? Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Good, man. We didn't miss you as much as uh, we missed you. Uh, so, Nas, I- I'm sure you've been absolutely, uh, completely into Liberty basketball, getting ready on the call tomorrow night. Uh, what's your kind of overall thoughts here as we're uh, uh, 22 hours away from, from opening tip? Yeah, um, I'm excited. I mean, like like everybody, um you know, it's kind of, I think my, my brain is kind of a mashup of a few different things. It's kind of weird. Like, um, I look at it as, a, I'm, I mean, I'm a fan too. Um, so I'm excited about, you know, the hype. And I look at the down the schedule and the games. and um, But sort of I put on that hat too of a, as a former player and a former coach. And I'm kind of like, hey, just everybody relax. <laughs> like, we got a lot of work to do. It's a long season. Let's not, you know, raise the expectations too high. Um, so I got a whole mix of feelings every time the year starts. Um, it's certainly exciting. Um, happy to be back on the call um, courtside with Matt Warner. And um, it's going to be fun. Um, from what I've seen of the guys, I am certainly encouraged. Um, uh, not only the returners, but the, but the new guys as well. Naz, we appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, excited to talk to you, brother. Um Question for you from the coach's perspective and I guess from the player's perspective as well. But last year, um, you know, there was a little bit of a change in the coaching staff. And, um, you know, what is there like a a different gelling and chemistry from year one to year two in the coaching staff, do you think? Or or how does that evolution take place? 
Well, you know, um, th I thought everybody just fit together real well, you know, maybe a little more uh, concerned last year, but um, much like you see um, with the new players that enter this program, like they're vetted and they're the right guys and, and coach McKay continues year after year to show that he's getting the right guys. I mean, the same is true with the staff and um, you know, coach adding some new guys and, and a couple of the former players, you know, Mayo kind of moved on and, but there's not a person that's um, in that program player or coach that isn't, isn't there um, for a specific purpose and reason. And, um, and a lot of prayer has gone into all of that over all those guys. And so, no, I think they're ready to hit the floor um, from what I've seen, even back in the summer uh, to even, you know, come by a couple practices just a couple weeks ago. Um, really encourage the guys are, are working their tails off, um, really getting unified. A lot of the pieces are there that, that um, could really turn into another special year. All right, Naz, I did a tiny bit of research here. Uh, I got an insider tip that you might have played uh, with Yates, Xander Yates' dad. Is that true? That is true. Yates, Yater, as we called him. Um, and and I'm telling you, like, John John Yates is is, is Xander's dad, and um, his only his only deficit was that he was about six <laughs> three, but he played like he was about six eight, like Xander. Um, so, I mean, he had the heart of a warrior and, um, you know, Xander I, I, watching him a little bit, it's kind of nice. I mean, just to, you know, kind of catch back up with John and, and see how everything worked out to get Xander here. Um, same thing. Great kid, great family, um, you know, strong in his faith and, and is here for a reason. It'd be great to see how he fits in, but, um, it's nice to kind of have that connection. And, um, you know, again, he, he, he kind of comes uh, in that in that mold, I guess, if you will, of some Liberty fours that, man, run the floor, see the floor well, can pass, can step out to three and shoot, and then can go inside and bang around. So um, it'll be interesting to see how he kind of uh, blends in as as one of the newcomers. Yeah, Naz, uh, Nick asked um, some of the players that we had on Kyle and Zach and uh, Colin and Caden, you know what were some of the, the games that they were looking forward to on the schedule? Same question for you. Anything that sticks out, you know, this coming up uh, year? Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of like watching some of these, some of these games where um, that, that, that we've kind of tracked as really strong mid majors the last few years. I know, I know, you know, things like Alabama jump off the map, but like Furman has been, really solid for several years and I, i'm really looking forward to see especially this year you know with the new guys and we don't have darius I'm really looking to see how we stack up against Furman. you know utah valley there might be some people that don't really you know know much about them but again another mid-major program that's been really strong so you know there's a couple there that i know you got other people i'll leave i'll leave some of your f later guests uh, a chance to put their two cents in but there's a couple that jump out for me Naz, I, I know you are rooting for every Liberty player, and I know you are excited about each and every in, one of them individually, and I know you you truthfully are. But is there one player that you think could be the guy that takes a huge leap this year? Well, um, you know, again, not to, not to be cliche, um, there's going to be a few guys that kind of need to take a leap this year. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to – we got to make up 25 points somewhere. And I know that's been keeping coach McKay up nights. And, you know, so, you know, guys are going to have to sort of step up and, and again, I'm, I'm, I have no concerns whatsoever defensively, you know, guys learning that system and, and being tough and going out there and doing their job, but, you know, offensively, um, you know, Zach Cleveland, man, he, the guy just is relentless and just fearless. And, um, you know, for what he did as far as, uh, you know, running the floor, rebounding, playing tough D. I'd like to see him, you know, get a few more points. We'll need some. And, and I think he's ready, you know, again, watching some practices. Um, you know, Shiloh, I think, uh, again, a guy that, that you know, is, is not new and and he's been in the starting lineup. Um, he certainly had some big games. Maybe I'd like to see him be a little more consistent. And then, um, yeah, one of the guys just had on Matheny. Um, I mean, he, I know he's a newcomer and I don't want to heap too much on him, but just really tough, really smart, and, and a guy that is going to step on the floor and not need to really 
build his confidence. I think he's going to hit the ground running, certainly with his experience. Yeah, Naz, as I've been thinking about it, just kind of in the same vein that uh, I almost feel that like the the barometer for judging the the team it should be growth and not necessarily success because there's going to be a little bit of a, a challenge to find an identity there. Am I am I wrong in thinking that, or or do you think that is going to be something that we need to be looking at? Uh, in yeah, you're, you're going exactly, to the conference plays. Yeah, you're exactly right, Will, and and that's what that's what kind of Flames Nation needs to do, like. Um, allow these guys, and, and it will take time, allow them to um, be the team they are, allow them to form a new identity. Um, and, and that does take time. Um, and again, that, that schedule is a, that's a tough schedule. <laughs> I mean, they go from, you know, tomorrow night with, with, uh, with kind of a little cupcake, but then it, man, then the heat, the heat comes on. And so um, there are going to be some growing pains, um, and it's going to be interesting. It's not going to be growing pain. Like you hear about growing pains and you think they got to get older. Well, we, you know, we have a good experienced team. The growth is going to be sort of unifying and, and giving them time to, like you exactly said, it's they, they need to find out who they are as a team this for this year, that group of guys that's in the locker room. And it'll take a little time to work out. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to ride with them all the way through the ups and downs. Um, but they're going to find themselves and, and that's being preached every day in practice and, um, you know, toughness, unselfishness and togetherness. And um, it, it'll it'll come together at the right time as it has the last several years. What a great job coach is doing. All right. Oh, We're going to rescore on with Naz. Naz, oh, my goodness. Out. <laughs> out. we got the, the whole net. Yeah. We got two, two thirds of the NASCAR podcast. <laughs> Scar, you you wore that Phillies hat just to troll my guy Will, and I have to say I respect it. Hey, you know you know what, um, Will, I have to apologize to all the Atlanta Braves fans that I gave a lot of crap to because I live here in Atlanta, and boy was that a great couple of weeks of great baseball. But then Arizona kind of ripped my heart out, but I'm still representing Philly. So, but I had, I had to come on. I had to come on, with my man Naz. That's my guy. That's right. We're, we're not here to talk about baseball, I don't think. <laughs> exactly. No, but, you know, Naz, people, and some people know this, but Naz and I grew up together. So we were rivals in middle school and high school, and then we both played at Liberty together. We both coached at Liberty together. Yeah. And now we have the NASCAR podcast and with Nick Pierce. So um, I said, let me let me, let me me jump in while my man Naz is on. I haven't talked to him in a while since, since Coach Meyer went to the – the Hall of Fame in September. That's the last time yeah, we saw Yeah, that's it. right. That was a great time. A great, you know, to kind of reminisce another big step in Liberty basketball history was when, 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 uh, you know, that weekend there when, when Coach Meyer went into the Hall of Fame. So, uh, yeah. Nick, I feel like the tag team champions have just stepped onto the scene. <laughs> <laughs> the rock and roll. I, know, I feel like we should just like step back and let these no, guys have no. a conversation. Yeah. We're not no, stealing we're not this is your guys' no. show. And I'm serious. You guys do an excellent job. Um, you know, we we me and Scar and Nick, we do our thing, but I mean we're 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 listening and watching you guys every week too, man. You guys crank out some awesome, some awesome product. We're we're behind you hundred percent. I mean, y'all are like the rock and roll express, man. Y'all just uh like just keep going. I, I got I gotta tell you though, it is hard to talk about Liberty basketball with Liberty football doing so well. Yeah. I mean, I'm still yeah. very much buzzing off a of football season. Um, nine and oh, top 25, bowl game eligible, hosting a bowl game already. First year of conference USA undefeated. You know, you guys mentioned Taylor Swift playing in the studio in the stadium <laughs> every I mean, what else can you ask for? <laughs> Hey, hey uh, if I could uh, interject, Nick, uh, you know, you guys have been around the program and the university for a long time. And Ian McCall has referred the, to this as the golden age of Liberty Athletics. Is that where y'all are on that? Do you feel like that that is uh, the case for sure? 100%. I mean, you know, I, I like to think of, you know, 1970s, mid 80s. That was kind of laying the foundation. And then us Division One guys came in kind of took that baton, took it to the next level, the Bailey Austins of this world, Julius's, the um, the uh, Peter Lumas, Larry Larry Jackson, Matt Hildebrand. Those guys kind of took it to the NCAA tournament. Naz got to coach some of those guys. I got to coach some of those guys. Um, and then we had a little bit of down period with Hankinson. Dutton brought it back to life. Richie McKay has taken it to a whole nother level. 
That's just basketball. And in football, I think, you know, Morgan Howe, Coach Howe just passed away a, a, a week ago. God rest his soul. But I was talking to someone about Liberty football in the 80s. They had five or six guys that made the, the NFL and were good players. It's like Richard Shelton and Eric Green and James McKnight and Dwayne Carswell. Those guys were on the campus of Liberty in the small Division One, the barely Division One football program, and they're putting guys in the NFL. Vertigliano, I mean, we have some great coaches here. Um, so football and basketball in particular, yeah, this is it's been nothing like this. Baseball is really good. Women's softball, we played in the national championship game in field hockey. So yeah, I mean, clearly this is easily the golden age for Liberty Athletics, and I expect it to continue for quite some time. Yeah, for sure. And 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 you know, Scar, I mean, that was just a you know a great little nutshell of, of everything that's happened. And I know, you know, I know Scar and I talk about this all the time, like to kind of even do a, the podcast and still be around the program to kind of know really it's how, where it came from. It's it, being back there kind of in its infancy um, to now, like we're, it's, it's kind of just a, a, it's humbling and it's a privilege to kind of still be able to talk about it and kind of have seen um, what it was to what it is. It makes all those, all the stuff we didn't have, it makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, 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 the facilities we have now, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, it's amazing. And the Lord, can the uniforms, yeah. <laughs> different uniforms, uniforms every, every night. And, right. and all that stuff. But um, you know what the Lord's doing there uh, through a lot of great teams and a lot of great coaches um, and great fan bases, um, you know, all, all together for LU. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. And, and we're enjoying it. We're along for the ride too, just like all the fans. All right, well, Naz, uh, I'm going to get you out of here but uh, so we can talk to Scar, pepper him about conference you're saying. But, Naz, it, what's the NASCAR podcast coming back? When am I going to get that in my feed? What's the plan? Well, you guys were doing the big kickoff show, so we're going to kind of wait probably till the first week and get a game or two under our belt, and then we're going to – then we'll roll ours out. But, um, yeah, it, it's fun. And, and you know, honestly, I love everything that, that the various um, – media outlets are doing i mean again i'm serious you guys do an incredible job um you know we try to go in there and throw more some more positives into with basketball but you know with with x and you know some of these other um social media things that are really back in the team you just can't you can't say enough because you got um you got such great kids i mean you had a few of them on before us um but but getting to know those guys off the floor they're great kids they represent some really awesome families um the coaching staff i mean are about as genuine of, of just amazing men as you could find and so we just love to get on and, and promote them because they're they're earning it and every you can't just say enough good things about them so yeah i'm gonna get out of here guys thanks for having me on any anytime i can help let me know scar i'll catch up with you later man man all right naz we'll talk soon buddy later we'll do and now we're bringing can't on Miss Pierce. <laughs> it, Come on can't out. Wait to fire, <laughs> can't wait to fire up uh, ESPN Plus tomorrow night and uh, have Naz on the call. So, Scar, I, I gotta, we got to talk to you about Conference USA. I know you were there yeah. for Conference USA Media Day. What, what are we expecting in this conference? And, you know, and, and, and don't, don't forget the fact that I've covered Conference USA for the last 10 years for American Sports Network and then Stadium TV. Um, and, unfortunately, Stadium is no more – in terms of live uh, games. So I won't be covering Conference USA this year, but I'll be following it closely with the NASCAR podcast. Um, I actually do call games at Western Kentucky on ESPN+. Plus. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I expect this conference to be a really fun conference. Liberty is going to be able to compete. Now, remember, this is not the same Conference USA that I've covered the last nine years. Um, you know, No North Texas, no UAB, no FAU, you know, no, no UT San Antonio. Some of these teams were really good. And I, I, I said this at media day. I remember thinking when I would do games at, at Middle or games at Western or Louisiana Tech, and I'd go, man, I wonder if Liberty could come in here and win. And I didn't think the answer was always yes. I mean, these are, it's going to be some really some really good games on the road uh, in particular. I mean, and, 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 and vice versa. Those teams are going to have a tough time going into to Lynchburg and getting a win too. So, um, But it's going to be a good – it's going to be a fun – conference to watch um everybody's gonna have to fill each other out this year right because a lot of teams left teams are coming in sam houston state i hear they're pretty good they have a new coach 
New Mexico State, you guys were sleeping on New Mexico State a little bit, but uh, they have Sam Houston's old coach, and he's going to come in there, and, and, you know, he brought in a transfer, uh, Kaizi Aziogo, and there's a big African kid. I met him at media day, and he was trying to steal a couple of more players, but he couldn't get them to transfer. But New Mexico is going to – New Mexico State is going to be pretty solid this year, and in two or three years they're going to compete at, at a really high level in that league. They got a really good home court advantage too, right? They absolutely do. And, and, you know, it's interesting because covering Conference USA, you go to UTEP all the way over to Old Dominion. So, you know, Norfolk, Virginia to El Paso, Texas, and all parts in between. Now UTEP has a travel partner with New Mexico State. So um, I haven't had the privilege. I've done New Mexico State games, but I haven't been to to um, New Mexico State to do a game. But, yeah, I understand that they have a really, really good fan base and a really great atmosphere to play ball in. Yeah, they had they had some unfortunate events happen last year, you know, towards just, the end of the season. Um, yeah. Man, you know, I was uh, just doing a little reading. Nobody from first conference CUS, USA, uh, the first conference team is back this year. Nobody from the second team conference USA team <laughs> is back this year. Only no, one man. of the <laughs> yeah, all, all but uh, uh, one from the defensive team is back this year. So uh, it's like a, it's a brand new league. Um, are you expecting? Uh, I'm expecting a you know a, a big gap between the top of the league and the bottom of the league. Where where are you at on that? How do you see things shaking out? Yeah, I'm not necessarily thinking that right now. I mean, I think okay. of FIU, one of the leftovers that has perennially been kind of that team that has been getting knocked around by some of those bigger teams, UAB and North Texas in particular, who have been really good. But Western's been really good, too. I know they have a new coach now, and Coach Lutz. Uh, Rick Stansberg did a great job there. They have a really high standard because that that program is used to going to the NCAA tournament. They haven't been in 10 years. That was one reason why Rick Stansberry got let go, despite the fact that he was bringing in SEC-level talent year in and year out, the former um, Mississippi uh, State head coach. They haven't heard you transfer this year. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they had a seven foot seven kid from last year, Jamarion Sharp, who left. But, man, he was he led the country shot blocking for two straight years. And uh, they, they had some really good talent. I expect Western to be really tough again this year, despite having a lot of new faces. I think Middle Tennessee, Nick McDevitt, who Big South people know from being. A, I mean, I remember Nick McDevitt when he was a player, when I, me and Naz were coaching at Liberty. We used to do scouting reports on him. And then he went and coached at Asheville. Um, and then, you know, the last four or five years, he's been at middle, um, a really good fit. You know, I, he survived those first couple of years where he had a bu- some bumps in the road, but he brought in some really good talent. They're going to be tough to beat. I, I expect middle Western Louisiana tech and Liberty to all kind of be jockeying for the top four spots, but the middle part, you know, Jacksonville state has Ray Harper, who used to be the Western Kentucky coach, you know, they're down, but you know, New Mexico state, they're down. Sam Houston is losing a few people, a new coach, but all those teams are going to compete right away. And FIU, as I talked about, Jeremy Ballard is a former VCU assistant. I go back to when I used to live in Richmond. He and I are good friends. Talked to him at media day. And, you know, they lost Denver Jones, one of the top scorers in the country, but they still have plenty coming back too. So even the FAU, FIUs of this world are going to be tough to beat night in and night out in this league. All right, Scar. We'll definitely, we're going to bring you back on right before CUSA plays and really kind of dig into this a little bit deeper. But one last question before we get you out of here. What do you think has to go right for Liberty this year to be contending for uh, to play in the NCAA tournament? You know, it's a shame because in the past, anyway, I felt like Conference USA is a two-bid league, but the reality is it's a one-bid league. So a lot of the things you do non-conference, It gets you ready to play in Conference USA, but it's really going to come down to what you do in Alabama in March. And this Liberty team will be ready. They'll be prepared. And it's going to come down, you know, it came down to a day in in Atlanta, in Kennesaw, uh, Georgia, this past March, right? And it came down to a one or two possession. So it's a fine line between going to the NCAA tournament and not going to the NCAA tournament. But, you know, it's going to be a matter of, you know, we, we talked about Colin Porter hit a big shot in that game. Um, you know, uh, Peebles is going to have another year. Kyle Road, I think he played with Larry Blair, and now he's still playing now. And he's <laughs> he's a guy that's been around forever, and he's going to have that out. leadership. Shiloh Robinson's coming back. So they have enough to win it all. 
But again, it's going to come down to one or two possessions. It's doing all the little things now in the beginning of the season and carrying over and building your habits, something that their culture has been like since Richie McKay came back. So I expect them to be right there. And, you know, if the ball bounces their way, they'll get to the NCAA tournament this year. But there are no guarantees. One big league. It's a fine line between winning and losing. But, you know, as a as a flame fan and a flame uh, media person and, a, and an alum, I'm pulling for him hard. Awesome. Well, Scar, appreciate you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll catch up again soon. All right, guys. Good seeing you. Yeah, still not over that shot quality score from that uh, Kennesaw State game, but we'll move on. All right. Matt Warner, the guy. What's going on, Matt? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. This has been fun. The voice of the flames, baby. I love it. You guys hear me all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Something on our end. Okay. So, Matt, I'm, I'm going to come in hot here. All right? Yeah. So, I I'm watching yesterday on Facebook the the Flame Central game day. And it was just, it was just so well done. Just a beautiful. When am I going to get that for a basketball game? <laughs> there has been some discussion that there might be a couple occasions where we make where we may do something like that. So believe me, those of us that, that love hoops, we have been in talks trying to make that happen for at least a couple of games. So hopefully that is happening. Love it, love it. Hey Matt, um, you know tomorrow night uh, on the call for uh, Mid Atlantic, and then uh, later on in the year against Boyce, the the Battle of the Baptist. Yeah. Um, and uh, St. Andrews, um, I'm expecting that you'll be calling some blowout games. Um, it, what are you looking forward to uh, as far as conference play, uh, you know, with some new teams and uh, some new uh, rosters and rotations that you're not, uh, you know, particularly used to uh, calling games for? Well, I'm looking forward to first the non-conference play when you get this time where you're checking the scoreboard so we can kind of start getting a gauge of, the dude, you know, which teams are as good as we thought they might be, which aren't, and kind of comparing some scores. All right, they beat these guys. Who, you know, what does their schedule look like the rest of the way? Getting a game for them here early on to see, you know, like like your, you know, like Scar was saying, like a lot of unknowns, right? A lot of new head coaches, a lot of players have exited from this conference uh, compared to a year ago. So there, there are a lot of unknowns. So non conference play, I know for for Naz and I will be really important. Just kind of watching as many of their games as you can, tracking box scores. And just trying to get a gauge like that the preseason poll i feel like means nothing and i know richie mckay's even said that he even, even said like how, how are you putting this first you don't even know you know we lose our all-time leading score you know a lot of it is just based on reputation with the season poll so you get into these non-conference games you really start to get a feel for who's really a team that can contend for the conference title and that'll be exciting to watch in a few weeks yeah, I'm I'm uh, almost just as excited to watch uh, La Tech at Colorado State late tomorrow night, uh, just to kind of get a, a sense of you know how good are these guys uh, right. and how are they gonna gonna compete. Uh, Matt, as you're kind of looking through uh, th this roster uh, from from Liberty this year, who do you think is maybe the one guy that that needs to take a huge leap for Liberty? Yeah, I think it, it, you narrow me down to one. Like, I, I, I kind of think of two guys. I think Zach Cleveland needs to take that leap and become the guy that we really saw over the last couple of weeks of, of the season last year. And he battled the mono thing, so he was out for a while. But I think you need to see him prove on, on the offensive end and become more consistent there. And then the other guy, we've been saying it for a while, but you really need it now, is Joseph Benzant. Needs to give you something offensively. It doesn't have to be a lot, but if he can give you – four more points a game than he did a year ago, just a couple of shots, like it's huge because, you know, with Darius McGee on the offensive end, that covered up a lot of things. We know what Vinzant's going to give Liberty defensively, but if he can kind of just up that offensive game just a little bit, that'll kind of help close that gap and help uh, make up some of those points you lost when McGee, you know, graduated last year. What what's your process as far as going into the season? Are, are you able to go to practices? Do they let you in? Are you able to kind of like fill out, you know, some of the guys and, and watch some of the new players and stuff like that? Yeah, the, uh, Coach McKay is awesome. So he, he's like, come by any time. I wish I could get there a lot more than I do. But I went to a few in, in summertime. I've gone to a few in the lead up to the season. 
And uh, I do think this is going to be a really good team. I think for a lot of fans that, you know, all they know is Darius McGee's gone. They, they may think, well, okay, it's going to be a, take a little time to kind of build back up. Like, I'm telling you, I think this team has a chance to be really good. And I think, and you had him on earlier. I, I think Caden Matheny is going to lead this team in scoring this year. I think he's he's going to provide some offensive punch for this team at one of the guard spots. And I think he's going to be a fan favorite really, really quickly. All right, Matt, we did this last year. We got to do it again. We got to make up a line for tomorrow night. So right, last year – it was minus 66. I'm going to go ahead and say that might be a little bit too too much. So, yeah. I mean, I'm going to put it minus 49 and a half. I might I might lean towards the Mustangs if that if that's the if that's oh, the, the okay. line. We might I might lean towards the Mustangs there. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I think you'll see a lot of guys that uh deeper down the bench earlier, you know, in the in this kind in this kind of game, especially first game of the year. Uh, but it similar to last year, you remember you had those games where it's like you play the 91, you turn around and play Alabama. You know, it's like you're you're jumping right into it quick. This schedule, as you, you mentioned, some of those showdowns with Boyce and some others has a little bit of that feel to it. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how much Richie lets the starters and, and those guys that he expects to get consistent minutes go out there and get some work in tomorrow night. Or does he get to that bench early on and uh, and let some of those guys get some run? Well, I'm I'm looking at it here. The Mustangs last year, unless they've completely changed their style, they averaged 91 points a game, but they averaged giving yeah. up 97. So, what is the Liberty Arena record? 106? Is it? I mean, we, I we can see a yeah. record. We can see a record tomorrow. That that this is a team that 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 might give up some points. Right, and and you get some of those guys coming off the bench that are going to want to get there. I always go back to Richie McKay's too nice to ever really yeah, put yeah. it on somebody. So that's why I typically lean that direction. But no, nah, it'll just be good to see him out there and see this new version of this squad and just see how all the pieces fit together. Uh, the talent, I mean, the talents definitely can contend for a, a conference title again. Yeah, well, Nick, when you said uh, the line, I thought you were um, going to try to get uh, Matt to, to work in a line on that's the broadcast. That's what I thought. People uh, do that like, sometimes. I'll get text like, messages sometimes. Like Matheny shoots the three like he's been the convocation three times this week or something like that. See, um, that would be too obvious. They know uh, exactly who said me that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you got any other anything else, Will? No, we're just uh, we're really looking forward to the season and uh, love what you guys do at Flame Central. I listen to it every week, and um, you know every time it drops, I look forward to it and. Um, we, we, we can't wait to uh, hear you guys on the call again for basketball season. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Naz and I have been texting back and forth. We're figuring out which polo to wear tomorrow. Like, we're locked in right now, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> I wish you guys would have a little bit more fun on the Flame Central podcast. You guys don't look, ever have any any fun at all. Serious journalism is what it is. <laughs> we take it very seriously, Yeah. <laughs> Well, Matt, appreciate you. Can't wait. Yeah. 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Fire up ESPN Plus. See Matt and Naz. That's uh, that's as good as it gets. All right. Well, Matt, appreciate you. We'll catch up again later this year. Hopefully, we're going to pay the bills real quick. Let's uh, hear from Jason Porter. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Jason Porter. I'm with Legacy Real Team Development, and it's been a, a great partnership here with Sea of Red lately. Uh, I was with Liberty Athletics as the Associate Athletic Director for Sports Medicine, so took care of all of the uh, healthcare needs and coordinated that with a fantastic staff at Liberty um, in the athletic department, of course, for about uh, five or six years, and then uh, moved into real estate full time and uh, with Legacy Realty and Development. And uh, it's just been a great pleasure to continue to stay connected with my Liberty University uh, family and the athletics family as well. I've been enjoying serving them. Uh, a lot of the um, graduate assistants and some of the staff that I hired has come back now and has uh, been using me for residential services, which I really appreciate. But certainly do residential real estate as far as buying and selling of homes, of course. And then also uh, we have a strong commercial presence as well. So commercial real estate, um, obviously a very, very different animal than is residential. But uh, whether it's buying and selling commercial uh, properties or uh, just the leasing of properties, we can help with that as well. So it's uh, been a great uh, opportunity to service our commercial clients as well. 
and then certainly on the investment front too. A number of um, folks who have discovered the power of passive income through real estate and investing in real estate with rental properties or fix and flips, those kind of things. And so great joy to, um, to serve my clients in that capacity as well. The uh, other thing that I would add too is just a very, very full Rolodex at this point of contractors and subs and just different professional contacts that I've made through the years. So if I can ever provide any of those folks to you and all of a sudden you need a plumber or an electrician or a contractor to build your deck, whatever, I'd certainly be glad to give you access to that Rolodex and those references as well. Because a lot of times it's not exactly who you know, it's uh, who you know that knows how to do the job well. And so I would be glad to provide those services for you as well. So love Flames Nation, love taking care of um, my Liberty uh, family. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, my contact information is all right here on the screen. And I would love to be a uh, service to you and yours. Thanks so much. All right, well, good stuff so far. We still we still got a lot to come. So you got John Manson, Chad Hassan. They're going to join us live in just a few minutes. Uh, Alan York still coming, and, of course, the rest of my conversation with Richie McKay. But before we get to that, I sat down with Rocco Miller. Rocco couldn't join us live because the guy was flying across the country. This guy is the hardest-working guy in college basketball. Uh, he gave us some thoughts on this Liberty team and Conference USA. All right, joined now by Rocco Miller of bracketeer.org Rocco college basketball uh as, as this is interviews being played is only a day away I know you're excited oh absolutely I, it's it's right around the corner tomorrow morning we're gonna have games starting at 11 a.m eastern 8 a.m out here in the west where I live um it's you know 126 games or so of d1 versus d1 um, well over 300 teams taking the court. So yeah, from my perspective, it's it's going to come fast and furious, but I can't wait. I'm excited to talk to you about Liberty and, and their new conference. It's, um, I, you know, I think there's a lot to be excited about. Yeah, and uh, we, we loved having you on last year. You're one of the hardest working guys in college basketball. So I knew when we were putting the show together, we had to find a way to get you on a new look Liberty team this year. Uh, I won't expect you to know everything about every single team, but if there's anyone that does, it's you. What's your thoughts about this uh, Liberty team coming into uh, the first year post Darius McGee? Yeah, post Darius McGee's, uh, of course, going to steal some headlines early on. But I, I think, you know, the Liberty community, the fans, and especially the broader national audience are going to really start to like this Liberty team quite a bit. You, you've got two seniors, uh, very experienced seniors, led by Kyle Road and Shiloh Robinson back as I'm sure you've talked about on this program and Caden Matheny coming over, you know, that's a really nice experienced piece that will uh, come from a very similar caliber league in the Mac. And uh, he did some really nice things over at Bowling Green. Um, you know, obviously the, the backcourt's a little small, but I think Richie McKay has gotten away with that for years uh, in the a sun. So we'll see how that translates to the conference USA. But from, from my research uh, in this brand new conference USA, uh, I, I, you know, I do think Liberty's got the strongest roster. They're certainly experienced. The track record, you know, if you look at five of the last six years, uh, Liberty under Coach McKay has been a top 100 Ken Palm team. And last year broke their uh, whatever whatever we call it, Ken Palm era record as the 48th best team in the country. Um, one of the best mid majors, yada, yada, yada. I, I, I do think Liberty with all the pieces back minus McGee is set up to not only contend, but I think. Uh, have the bullseye on their back in this brand new era of Conference USA basketball. So speaking of Conference USA, uh, I've done my best to try to research, but with so many transfers on all these teams, tell us a little bit about this league. Uh, it feels like a league that has a, at least to me, has a high variance. Like it could be a pretty decent league or it could be a league that, that maybe is very top heavy. Is that kind of how you see it? Yeah, I actually think it's going to be more balanced than anything, um, mainly because there's so many uh, different intriguing parts. So I think the easiest way to lay lay the land out is you've got returning teams from the league because there's just been so many so much movement. It's hard to remember who was even in there last year. Um, so it's Middle Tennessee, who I think would be the biggest competition probably on paper for Liberty. Uh, Middle Tennessee arguably could be the pick. I think they got a couple first place votes when they were healthy last year and they do have a 
big chunk of their core back this year. Um, they finished fourth in, in this league, which is saying a lot because the top three were all extremely good. Florida Atlantic, we all know the story, final four good. And then the other two second and third place teams were in the NIT championship game, UAB in North Texas. The fourth best in the standings was Middle Tennessee. And when they were fully healthy, they blew out that great Florida Atlantic team, one of the, I think the only team to blow them out all year. So when Middle Tennessee's at peak Middle Tennessee, they're very dangerous. Um, really curious to see if A, they can stay healthy and B, they can put a full season together. They've they've really looked good to me in chunks of seasons the last few years. They just haven't put that full season together. And then next, you know, Western Kentucky is going through a coaching change, but I think they did a marvelous job in their hiring process. They brought in Steve Lutz, who quickly took Texas A&M Corpus Christi, which before he got there was a very bad job in the Southland Conference. Took him to two March Madnesses out of three tries. Um, that was really quick work. He brought a great staff with him to Western Kentucky, and they brought in some guys from high major uh, programs. So, so Howard comes over from Purdue. Uh, they've got another impact uh, shot blocker coming from the SEC, and uh, he quickly tooled together a roster uh, that that has experienced a lot of seniors, and I expect them to be really strong by the time we get to league play. It's going to take them a while to mesh. And then you have uh, Louisiana Tech's back in the league, and they have Isaiah Crawford back, the preseason player of the year in the league. Um, they're going to run everything through Isaiah. He's got a really interesting background. He had uh, two season-ending uh, surgeries in, earlier in his career. This is his last hurrah. Had a great year last year. So they're looking for big things out of him. And then UTEP is back. And it's always interesting when a coach enters his third season. Uh, Joe Golding did such great things at Abilene Christian. We all remember when they upset Texas in the NCAA tournament. And now he's really trying to get UTEP uh, to, to, to get into the top half of this league. They bring a lot back. A great player in Tay Hardy you need to keep your eye on. Um, they have a chance to really, uh, really skyrocket up the standings and get into that top three. So I'm looking at UTEP really closely as well. Rocco, do you remember Caleb Holmesley from Liberty? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Does, does Isaiah Crawford kind of remind you a little bit? Caleb Holmesley just also, he had multiple injuries, but then his senior year took over, got Liberty over the hump, scored 30 points in the NCAA tournament. That's about right. the same size. Any any similarities there? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great comparison, especially when you look at the injury thing. And, you know, Crawford's uh, a guy that can play two through four positions. Uh, so they, you know, Coach Talvin Hester can do a lot of different matchup combos with him in there. And I know Liberty runs their stuff around the perimeter and five out type of offense. So uh, there are some similar – it's not the same offensive scheme, but it, the way they can plug and play him in multiple places, um, I do like that comparison. Okay, so – uh, looking at Liberty's schedule, this is uh, by far, I think, the most, maybe the deepest non-conference schedule for Liberty. Maybe not the headlining names, but there's so many good, intriguing matchups, especially mid-major to mid-major. What are some games that really stand out to you? Well, first of all, I love what they did uh, with Field of 68, a company I do some some work with, and um, building in this brand new creative event, a three-year contract with uh, two really quality college basketball programs, the College of Charleston, as well as uh, Florida Atlantic, who's a top 20 team, top 10 team by some opinions this year. And um, so basically they'll each get a chance to host each other. It's a full round robin, two games over a three-day weekend, Friday through Sunday. Starts this year in Boca Raton. Next year it goes to Charleston, and the year after it'll go to Liberty. Such a cool thing to permanently be locked into for the next three years. So Flames fans can really get excited about that. Um, I'm going to do my best to be down at that, by the way. And then I think the other, um, you know, when you look at their event they're in, um, it, it's it's through ESPN. It's going to be heavily watched. Uh, everybody watches Myrtle Beach Invitational. And the neat thing there is it's all mid-majors. Um, so they're matched up against Furman in the first round. Uh, I'll actually be there, by the way, Nick, uh, covering that. So I'm looking forward to bringing you guys some great coverage. And, you know, I think that liberty Furman game, especially in November, is so hard to predict. I, I do like Liberty's team overall better for the – for the full season, but anything can happen in the second week of the season. So the winner of that game will be really crucial because I do like that draw. Uh, the other the other game in their side of the brackets, Wichita State against Coastal Carolina. And no matter who wins that game, those teams are both picked in the bottom of their league uh, per se. Wichita is about eighth or ninth in the American. Um, so even if it is them, you know, Liberty will have a great chance to get to the championship. And that could create a cool scenario if they play Charleston, uh, for the championship, and they could maybe play them, and they will definitely play them 
the following weekend in, uh, or sorry, two weekends later in Boca Raton. So that's an interesting storyline. Then you've got the Alabama game, a special game played in Birmingham right before New Year's. Obviously, that's just a swing for the fences. If if you connect, you know, you get a massive win for your resume, and we're suddenly perhaps looking at an at-large team. And then I think with this Conference USA WAC challenge, uh, the two leagues did a good job putting their best against their best. Grand Canyon's clearly the best team in the WAC. They're coming to Liberty. Great home game for Liberty. I believe they're going to return that to Grand Canyon the following year. So that'll create an automatic great road, uh, road opportunity for the Flames the following year. And uh, they also put together a game against Charlotte right there in the first week of the season, which will be a nice appetizer to see how the team looks right, you know, before Myrtle Beach. Awesome. Well, Rocco, before I get you out of here, tell everyone where they can find you and all the great work you do. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I'm at Rocco Miller eight on Twitter. Uh, I guess we call that X today. And so uh, you can look me up there. It's throughout the season. I'm on there going nonstop on, you know, all 32 leagues and then bracketsheer.org is my website. We're in the middle of releasing a bunch of previews, including conference USA, which was just uh, written and getting edited today. So really excited for, for you guys to check that out. So again, that's bracketsheer.org. And then throughout the year, I'm i uh, I'm a guest on a bunch of shows like this field of 68 uh, hoops, HD, probably the main places you'll see me. Um, but you know, if you just follow along on the, on the Twitter uh, updates, you'll know where to find me. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Rocco. We'll catch up again soon. Sounds great. Enjoy. Have a good season. All right. That was our guy, Rocco Miller. And look who's joined us. A sea of red founder, CEO, president. I don't know if those are real titles, but John Manson and uh, producer 3000, Chad Hassan in the dark. What's going on, fellas? Hey, Nick. Awesome show so far. Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, thanks, uh, Nick and Will. You guys do an awesome job. It's a lot of fun to to tune into you guys each and every week and looking forward to the season. John, what do you think uh, – what's your, like, kind of expectations coming into this season? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's not, not anything different than what you've heard from some of your other guests. I mean, I think the Flames will be uh, right there at the top of the, the Conference USA, you know, new league, obviously, but – uh, you know, lose Darius, and, and that's obviously a storyline, big storyline going into the season. But uh, there's a lot of returners, and I think you'll see everybody, you know, kind of take a step forward, most most notably Colin Porter, uh, Kyle Rode, uh, Zach Cleveland. Uh, you can really name about five, six guys, to be honest with you. And then then I, I know a lot of guys have, have talked already tonight about Caden Matheny, but uh, expecting big things out of him as well. And and I think that backcourt, uh, those small in stature, Porter and, and Matheny will uh, put up a lot of points on, on a given night. And, uh, you know, again, an, another 20 win season should be in, in store for the Flames this year, which, which again, that that's not going to be an easy task for this team because, because, uh, you know, as, as we've talked, the, the schedule is a lot more challenging, especially in Conference USA. Uh, so getting to 20 wins won't be a small feat, but, but yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, expectations are high once again. Yeah. I mean, Kim Palm's only projecting 21. Um, and there's a lot of 50, 50 games uh, involved with that. Chad, that absolute, with that absolutely fire hat, what a hat, man. That is just a, a thing of beauty. What's kind of your uh, expectations coming into this season? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's uh, John and I went to WKU to watch football a couple weeks ago, walked in their arena and we were like, wow, this isn't uh, the A-Sun anymore. It was just uh, we. it was a welcome to like, you know, it was uh, actually eye opening. I mean, a lot of history in that stadium, a huge stadium, uh, you know, a Hall of Fame, a statue out front. Uh, it was just like, wow, this is uh, this is it. This is this is what the number 11 ranked, number 12 ranked conference in the country looks like. And, uh, you know, that's a whole lot different than walking into, uh, you know, some of the gyms we would, we did last year, even even Kennesaw State. You know, it's it's a nice new facility, but I don't know. It was just the the uh, the 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 history in that place was pretty un unbelievable. And uh, so I think the expectation is that we go in and I mean, we've been ranked number one, uh, but I don't know. It just feels like that it's going to be really tough. And another thing that kind of you know, I think Scar hit it perfect is 
it really does uh, come down to how you play in March uh, in the in the conference tournament. I mean, with the NIT being changed around the way it has and uh, a neutral site tournament, I mean, the regular season really is just about, you know, it's, it doesn't mean a whole lot. So it's, uh, it's all about playing your best basketball in March. And uh, if that is the expectation to be playing your best basketball in March, if that's the goal, um, I think we have the right the right coach to do that. I think McKay always pulls the right levers and has his team kind of peaking at the right time. So, I mean, if you go back season by season by season and how the team trajectory goes in terms of, like, finding the roster and people learning their roles. So the uh, long, long story short there is it's not the ASUN anymore, but I still expect us to be playing our best ball in March. And, uh, you know, it's really a crapshoot. It honestly is at, at that point. So. Um, hoping we're a two bid league, but uh, I don't know. It, it just, uh, I don't know if it's going to pan out that way this year or not. One, one quick nugget to just kind of piggyback on what Chad was just saying, but uh, talk about playing your best basketball in March. And that's very true. Uh, it's it's going to be important to, to do it because I think Conference USA is probably still a one bid league this year, but uh, under Coach McKay and now going into a third year, but five of the last six years, Liberty's played for a conference championship. They've been in the conference championship game. Uh, you know, losing two of those, obviously, both of them, you know, Radford and Kennesaw State to close out the tenure in that conference, a last second bucket, whether it was Carly Jones or a free throw there uh, against uh, Kennesaw, but and then sandwiched in between the three championship games. So uh, this is something that that this program has done is played well in March and hopefully they can do it again this year. Yeah, Chad, you brought up an interesting point that uh, we hadn't really referenced yet, but I'm sure we'll get into it later in the season. But, you know, in the A-Sun and in the Big South, it was home court, you know, for the tournament games uh, if you are a higher seed. And this year it's a neutral site, which um, we haven't seen in quite a while. But we also know that Liberty takes care of uh, students uh, traveling to some of those games and they try to get like a, a good crowd and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter who we play if we get there. I'm assuming a lot. Um, but <clears throat> if by chance we were to get into that championship game, I think Liberty will be well represented somehow. The administration will will help take care of that. Two other things. Number one, you wear that hat. That hat doesn't wear you. Uh, you look good in that hat. Mm -hmm. um, number two, can't believe you guys let us do this on a sea of red. Uh, we have so much fun and we appreciate y'all. Um, but. I think one of the big things that we've been kind of talking about is what is that? What does the newcomer picture look like? Um, we we feel pretty confident. We know that where Caden Matheny is going to be, but there's a lot of questions around some of the freshmen and things like that. And um, of course, Xander Yates too, coming from Creighton. Um, John, I'm not trying to ask you to reveal any kind of like uh, a sea of red club secrets here, but what are you uh, what are you thinking on the the red shirt front here? Yeah, well, we really don't know. I mean, Coach McKay hasn't really said yet. I, I think we'll find out here in, uh, what, about 22 hours or so from when we're talking now. But uh, I, I assume Kai Yu will redshirt, the, the big seven-footer from, from China. Just, uh, you know, that's not necessarily speaking down towards his game. He's just, uh, you know, it, it's always a transition to, to go from high school basketball to Division One basketball. And then you add in the, the language barrier that he's – uh, dealing with they've talked about him having to have like some some device in his ear that kind of translates what the coaches and players are saying to him during practice so that's a lot for him to to take in as an 18 19 year old kid so i expect him to to, to red shirt and then the the other two uh davis and blair they're both very talented i expect a lot out of them and uh you know we were all talking you know the other day just you know about the season in general and and it really would be nice if there was a, a similar rule like they have in football uh, for, for basketball, where football players get to play in up to four games and can still, you know, keep that year of, of eligibility and red shirt. Unfortunately, that's not the case for, for men's basketball. It'd be really nice if, if Coach McKay could, you know, roll out Blair and Davis, you know, the first two, three weeks of the season, see how they fit into the team, see how they adjust to the speed of the game and things like that, and see if he wants to keep them in the rotation moving forward or if not. So I think they both have a chance to play, uh, but, but I, you know, I think at least one of them will redshirt, if not both of them. 
Yeah, I, I kind of have some quick thoughts on that, too. I, that's why I love college basketball. John goes to just about as many practices as anybody. Nick looks at every single stat from every single year. I mean, we have a, a group following this team that is really into it, but there's always an unknown every offseason. And, and Coach McKay made a comment earlier this year. He's like, Kyle Road has gotten better. This is the biggest leap he's taken in between seasons. And I was thinking to myself, like, you know, that is so crazy because he's been around the longest, but he's taken a big leap. Uh, you have like freshmen like Colin Porter. None of us last year on this show predicted Colin Porter being our, you know, carrying the team. You got, you know, is that Curtis Blair this year? I don't know. We None of us know. That's why it's so great. And then you got players like Joseph Inzant. Did he spend hours and hours on, in the gym shooting his three pointer this year? Uh, Shiloh Robinson, what did he add to his game? This isn't the NBA where it's kind of like you put together a roster and you know who you're getting and what you're getting. We could be getting 12 brand new guys and, and you know, you kind of piece it together based on what, what you're seeing in practice. But I remember the very first game last year, the two things I noticed were Colin is going to play and be our number one ball handler and distributor. The second thing I noticed was Brody Peebles changed his shot in between his freshman and sophomore year. What are we going to see like that on Monday um, just to see like who has done what? And I know with John going to the practices and, and all the in-depth analysis, it's kind, we can kind of predict it a little bit better, but that's still college basketball is the great unknown and, and, and player development. Honestly, players get better in college and in, in, in the NBA. It's like, uh, yeah, you are who you are. In college, it's like, oh, well, you got from April all the way till November, and you're still growing physically. Uh, you you kind of adapt to the game, and you got a lot of time to put some reps in. Like in high school, a lot of these guys are still playing other sports and focusing on other things, and they get to basketball. I mean, they get to college, and then it's basketball 24-7. How much can they uh, grow in their games that way? So. It's the great unknown for all the players, not just the freshmen for me, that that makes it following this this sport so much fun. Well, Kyle Rowe would have to be like older than half the players on the Charlotte Hornets at this point, right? <laughs> I mean, I yeah. mean, he's gonna come in and, and be as experienced as maybe like any player we've kind of ever seen, which is gonna be interesting. I feel like guys, there's been Easter eggs all over the place that keep streaming. Zach Cleveland's gonna have a big year. Zach Cleveland's gonna have a big year. Mm -hmm. and, is that kind of what you guys are feeling here as well? Oh, 100 percent. And uh, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this uh, publicly, but I'm going to anyways and ask for forgiveness later. But the other day, Coach McKay said Chad was in the room with me. He said Zach Cleveland has the most NBA potential of anybody on the roster. Hearing him say that about a rising sophomore is, uh, you know, it kind of like gave me goosebumps hearing that type thing, you know, and. And, uh, you know, so so we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know what to expect from him. I mean, we saw what he did against Kennesaw and, and Villanova there late in the in the in the season. And, and we forget that he got mono midway through the year that kind of derailed his freshman season. Uh, but he was really coming on strong there in the uh, in the, uh, you know, end of the season. And, and he could be he could he could take that next leap and be an all conference type performer uh, this year. I think the coaching staff thinks that highly of him. It's just a matter of how quickly can he put it all together and how quickly can can uh, his uh, his brain maybe catch up to, to his body the, as far as the growth that he's been able to make on the court. Will, you got any other final questions for our esteemed panel here? <clears throat> yeah, uh, maybe unrelated to um, the upcoming season, but just for you guys as uh, far as far as the way that you guys cover Liberty Athletics, through a sea of red is are you guys like me where it's like a little bit of a difficult transition to focus in on football 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 and then switch to basketball while both things are going on or are well, you as just as excited as i am that we get both i i I'll, I'll be honest uh we don't shut off either so like john is talking basketball all year round and non-stop i mean we go from we go from a big win bas uh, in football on saturday and on sunday it's it's all basketball like you know so like on the way home from western kentucky we were what eight and oh after that biggest win of the season uh we broke down the entire conference usa basketball and it's just constantly like that so no, I don't find it hard to like go from basketball to football. I, honestly, I was thinking about this as I was watching earlier. Look, you remember last year when Calipari and uh, Stoops got into it down in Kentucky? Like, oh, we're a basketball school. Oh, we're a football school. 
And uh, I wonder, like, when President Costin come in, if he's like, is this a basketball or football school? Or Ian, you know, thinking about it. Um, I think we're both, and I think we can be both. And I think the way a sea of red, from my perspective, covers it is is it's both a school. And uh, John does a great job of um, – you know, the, the coaches on both sides will poke back and forth like, hey, sorry, you can't be at our game since you're going to be down at that team's game next week or whatever. But um, I know that John goes full throttle on basketball all year round. And if there's any recruits or anything developing or just keeping an eye on the program, talking with the coaches, going to practice. So it's really not it's really not much different now. The season's here other than we got games to talk about rather than roster and potential you know opponents john you feel the same or what no i i kind of agree with you and it was funny i don't know if anybody else was uh listening to, to coach mckay's press conference last week and 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 he made a comment about you know these players are different when there's popcorn popping out in the stands uh did anybody else think about chad when he made that comment because that's all i could think about was i can just see chad over there stuffing his face with popcorn and, and i'm sure he'll be doing it uh tomorrow night uh regardless of the opponent right but but that is one thing you know i was thinking about that tonight my, my daughter was asking me oh are we going to the game tomorrow and i was like yeah we'll be going you know them of course i'm going but uh yeah she'll be going too but um there's not a lot of home games the first start of the season i mean we you got the opener uh tomorrow night and then i think there's one more like uh the saturday uh, after thanksgiving the 25th i believe against maryland eastern shore if i'm correct and that those are the only two in the month of uh november so uh those of you that are in the lynchburg area if you're listening to this before monday night at 7 p.m make sure to get on out to uh liberty arena and check out this uh this flames basketball team yeah it's a good point yeah i mean you're not gonna have a whole lot of chances here earlier in the year uh thankfully when we get to conference usa there's gonna be just a lot of good teams coming in uh, week after week to Liberty Arena. I'm really excited about that. Well, guys, you are the best. Thanks for all your coverage. Uh, can't wait to uh, uh, for the season to get started and read all the work you do, John. Chad, see you in your your sparkling, dazzling outfits at Liberty Arena, uh, and I'll live vicariously through you. Hey, I see you guys having Alan York on next. I just wanted to shout out Alan. I, there's nothing more than I love. I leave the arena at halftime because I live in Roanoke and I'm not trying to like get home at 11 o'clock at night. So I leave at halftime pretty much every game, unless it's just like one of the few big time games. And I love listening to the radio on the way home. And uh, Alan does a great job and appreciate all he does. So Alan, uh, thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to listening to you tomorrow night. And I know that it gets a little loose when we're up like 60, 70 points. You don't have much to talk about, um, but Alan does a great job. He did a good job with that the other night in the football game, kind of, kind of keeping it together there during what was kind of a blowout. But anyways, thank you guys for all you do as well. This show is a lot of fun and appreciate you guys doing it. Well, couldn't have a better lead than that into Alan York. So let's bring him in. Alan, how we doing? I'm going to need to back up a little bit, man. You got me zoomed in here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying, trying some different angles here. I think this this works better, but it, it does have some people pop it in like, whoa, that's that's intense. Alan, oh, how we man. doing? Love it. 22 hours from tip. How excited are you for the start of the season? Uh, really excited. I heard the question you had about the crossover season, which officially starts for us tomorrow. And uh, how can you not be excited with where Rich McKay has this team and this program? And um, I know each year it's re recycling the roster and what you have to do with it. And um, but he doesn't really circle one particular person as being the key. It's it's the sum of the parts. And we all know that being around Richie. And that's one thing that um, in Richie we trust. And I, I tell people all the time that I wish I had more time to be around their program, um, especially at home. I mean, I love the home games, the arena. It's great. But I, I my family doesn't like it. But I enjoy the road trips, if not more than the home games because you get so enriched being around them consistently, however we travel to these cities, but in the hotel, in the meeting rooms, um, you just become a better person being around, not just him, but his staff and, and his team. So I'm tickled to have tomorrow night uh, ready. And uh, Jason Porter is going to be right there with us doing the radio as he does with football. So, uh, and he's a former college basketball players so that that is his wheelhouse for sure and uh, we're gonna have some fun tomorrow night yeah I look forward to that 
uh, Alan, I always love your post about when you go to the other cities, you you find the local food joint, and that's that's definitely after mine. Oh, are you looking forward to that with CUSA with some new towns you're going to get to to maybe uh, discover in uh, in in basketball season? Absolutely. Um, you know, funny about there is a X account C underscore USA Eats that uh, Carlos Zimmerman, who's the voice of Sam Houston, and and their their Bearcat. I think it's their SID that started it. And so now when we go to places, we'll send pictures and and tag that on it. So it's becoming uh, kind of fun to do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love to travel and, and, and see new places. And with um, it was great independent football going to different places to, to do that. But I just think having the, uh, the, the built in conference schedule um, and it's going to, I've told people guys, it's going to take you know, who's going to be the rival. We don't know yet. We may not know till after baseball and softball season are done this spring to see kind of collectively how every, Thing does but to answer your question nick yes i love traveling and seeing new cities and um finding new places to eat and uh we went to utep uh or, or el paso i should say uh back in like 18 19 when we had that back-to-back -back weekend with new mexico new mexico state um and el paso's got some great spots to eat so looking forward to, uh, to that uh, football trip coming up at the end of the, uh in november well uh Alan, uh, Mid-Atlantic Christian University is the uh, foe for tomorrow night. Uh, uh, short list of my top five colleges to go to when I was coming out of high school. They used to be called Roanoke Bible College, and it wasn't too far from my house. But um, what what is your uh, preparation like for the first basketball game of the season? Are you watching film? Are you just uh, talking to coaches? Or, um, you know, what is your, what is your prep like? I'm curious to hear what Matt Warner had to say about that and uh, Paul Nazgan earlier this week, because uh, we do share some stories. And if we can get around to, to shoot around with the other coaches, we'll record it and send it to each other. So uh, different mediums, a video stream and uh, and radio, but we still work together and share uh, tidbits. Uh, my prep has been straight website uh, for this particular game. I know they played on Saturday, a high scoring game against Carolina University. And uh, kind of just juxtaposed uh, their roster from last year. They've got seven fre freshmen on the 15-man roster and a couple of guys that can fill it up. Now, obviously, the talent's not going to be uh, equal tomorrow night. Uh, I think we all know that going into it. Is this going to be an exhibition uh, for Mid-Atlantic Christian, uh, which is out of Elizabeth City, North Carolina, by the way, for those fans mm -hmm. that may not know that. So some uh, uh, education there for the fans. But – uh, it's strictly been just, you know, looking at uh, looking at the website and just clicking on the roster and kind of seeing what they're all about. But uh, that's kind of what it's been for me. And if you if you like Carolina barbecue there, there's some good barbecue in that part of the country right there. Yes. Every time we uh, you know, we have a new webcam now in our radio booth uh, that's become really popular. And there's a, yeah. a fan from Goldsboro, North Carolina yeah. uh, that yeah. always watches us. Um, and I always mention that side the Eastern and that's kind of my style. And I love County smoke, uh, here in town and, and Ken's yeah. got a lot of different sauces, but I'm like vinegar based all the way. And I know that's what, uh, is the main thing down there in Eastern North Carolina. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so Alan, you, you, unlike, uh, uh, Matt and Naz will get to do a lot of road games. I know you, you won't get to do all of them because you'll be sharing football duties, but I don't. Is there a non-conference game that you're going to get to do on the road, or either I don't know if you get to do the tournament in Myrtle Beach that you're really looking forward to? Well, looking at right now, we're still working on our plans uh, for that Myrtle Beach uh, trip, and the thing that's kind of unique about it is the Thursday, Friday for Liberty, regardless if they win or lose, are going to be night games, and we have a one o'clock kickoff in Lynchburg on that Saturday. Uh, so we're trying to figure out logistically because Nick's going to be busy doing uh, volleyball. Uh, Liberty's hosting the volleyball tournament. Jamie Hall is going to be away doing women's basketball. So um, I – Nick is available. Nick is available. I right, think. yeah. So I uh, – anyway, um, so we're trying to figure that one out. Um, there's some great places in Conway and Myrtle Beach for sure. Uh, but I would have to say I'm going to miss – I say thankfully because Liberty's playing in the Conference USA Football Championship. I'm going to miss the trip to Boca. So Nick Pierce will go down 
and do those two. Um, but, you know, heading out to Salt Lake City uh, to play Utah Valley is going to be kind of cool. Um, used to do high point basketball uh, back in the day and uh, went to uh, went to Salt Lake to play Utah Valley. Funny enough, it's been many moons ago. So um, haven't been back in the area since then. So that'll be kind of fun. And obviously playing a top 25 team in Alabama, at least right now, initially they are. That's going to be a really cool one as well. Um, you know, obviously for you know Brody, Brody Peebles to be able to go back to his home state, et cetera. Uh, so those are just a couple of those uh, we're looking forward to here. And obviously the one Friday down in Charlotte against the 49ers. Uh, anytime you get a chance to broadcast or play in an NBA arena, uh, it, it, it hits different for sure. Well, you got any other questions? No, uh, no nothing for me other than just uh, uh, thankful that you're going to be on the call. And, um, you know, we get we get to hear you do football and basketball. And, uh, well, one question is, I, I know you've changed up some of the touchdown calls this year with Strike the Stone. Uh, and that's the that's the football uh, mantra, I guess. Any any changes coming up to any uh, calls for basketball this year? Any uh, three point shot calls or anything like that? No, nah, we'll see. That's pretty organic with that. Um, and I, I, you bring that up. It's Coach Chadwell likes it, obviously, because he brought the strike the stone, and it it fits. Yeah. It, it hits, I think, really well. Um, you talk to a couple of the the real passionate fans; they still want to light them up. And I had one fan. Uh, email me after I think week one or two against New Mexico State and uh, Bowling Green. And they said, man, we're really upset. You don't have light them up. I'm like, you had to have missed it because it's not going anywhere. And, it, and it's still there. Um, but the particular calls they heard, maybe I did say strike the stone. And so they thought it was gone completely. And I said, wait a minute, that's 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 not going anywhere. So don't worry about that. But basketball is pretty – Pretty organic. I, as a matter of fact, I don't even use light em up in basketball. I don't know why that is, but I think it just it fits for football and not so much basketball. So you'll see a lot of bangs and booms and got it and oh my, those types of things tomorrow night for sure for basketball. Well, Alan, can't wait to to listen to you call some games this this season. Uh, when I was going back through doing our intro video, I couldn't I could believe how many calls you've been on, how many big moments. And uh, hopefully have a few more of them this year. Well, if, if this team has anything to do with it, I'm sure there's going to be a lot. And uh, even Conference USA, as competitive as it's going to be. Uh, but uh, the Flames are always a force to reckon with, with uh, Coach McKay at the helm. All right, Alan. We'll really appreciate your time. Uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Go Flames. Thanks. All right. Well, Let's get to the rest of our interview with Coach Richard McKay, and then me and Will come back and uh, uh, put a bow on this. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, so far tonight. Here's Richie McKay. All right, joined now by Liberty men's basketball head coach Richie McKay. As this is playing, you'll be less than 24 hours away from opening tip of the 2023-24 season. How are we feeling? Uh, obviously, Nick, uh, great to be with you again, man. I, I can tell it's that time of year because I get to see you a little bit more regularly. But yeah, we're, we're anxious to get started. You know, they, the, the NCAA gives us so much access now. Our guys have been doing this since really spring, and they've been on campus since June with a couple of weeks break. So I think they're ready to see someone else. We had a couple of scrimmages and all that, but uh, ready to get in front of Flames Nation again and see if we can't start our journey for uh, what will hopefully be a really competitive run in Conference USA. All right, I'm sure you're exhausted about uh, the talk about how's this team going to look without Darius McGee. Uh, one thought that I want to ask you, maybe a little bit of a different approach to this, uh, is looking at your team this year, I feel like the one thing Darius really – might be the biggest struggle for your team this year – is that Darius was kind of a security blanket at times. And if you were late in the shot clock, Darius was very unselfish early in the shot clock. But if you got late in the shot clock, you could always count on him to put up that 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 crazy shot that was actually a pretty decent percentage for him. Is that maybe a concern for your team? Yeah, it, Nick, you follow it closely. Like you, I, I really compliment you on your basketball acumen because you, uh, especially Liberty basketball. And you're right, Darius – and, and you said crazy shots, but my man, we over five years, we saw him make the uh, the crazy look normal. So uh, for us, 
uh, he just had that fortitude to take over at the end of the game. Like I, I'm going to, I'm going to help us score a basket. And uh, there, it, it was such a great asset of ours. And uh, I would call it security blanket. Yes. And even more so uh, we encouraged him to do it, not just the coaching staff, but his teammates. I, I think this year's version of our group, any one of the five that are on the floor could take and make that shot. Not as uh, adept uh, at the, the range in which Darius could uh, make one of those attempts or the creativity, creativity or degree of difficulty that he would throw those up there. But I do think we have some capable guys. And, and when you're that diverse and, uh, and, and have multiple scores on the floor, I think you're a little harder to defend. I could be wrong, but uh, that's what the games are for. We're looking forward to seeing how we fare with uh, even though number two is not in one of our jerseys anymore. Do you think that could maybe force your team uh, especially earlier in the year, to maybe have to run better offense at times, not having that? Yeah, I don't know what our rankings were offensively. I, I got Derek Johnston, who uh, is a phenomenal coach. He's uh, one of our associate head coaches. He really runs the point of our offense. He could probably give you the analytic side of it better than I, but I do think our guys were pursuing of getting a great shot. And uh, I think this year's version of Liberty basketball uh, will certainly be in that lane. We, we, we uh, hear this the right way, Nick. We had some really good scores last year, but we had one of the best scores in the nation in Darius McGee. So it was, it was uh, uh, in my mind, incumbent upon us to give our team the best opportunity to, uh, to win the game on uh, whatever uh, ne that necessitated, whether it be Darius with the ball in his hands, uh, making decisions when he would get double teamed or, uh, maybe a different defensive lineup on the court that will still continue that. I just think our better offense will be in uh, how much more diverse the scoring distribution will be. For sure. Kyle Rhodes shot 40% from three. Colin Porter shot 39% over a hundred attempts. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty big league right there. I'm not going to ask you too much about conference USA. Cause I know you're in kind of a learning stage um, and you're probably as excited as I am to, watch some of these other teams and see how they how they uh, pan out. I wanted to ask you a little bit of a different question with Conference USA. I just saw that they released their bracket. Um, obviously, the neutral floor is going to be a different sense for you than I think any, any time at Liberty. I don't know if they've ever played on a neutral in the tournament. But one interesting quirk in that is I saw that one in two seeds, they play on – uh, I believe Wednesday, and then they don't play the semifinals till Friday. They get an off day. How would yeah. you feel about that in a conference tournament setting? Yeah, you know, we had an off day in the A Sun. Although the 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 way that conference tournament was structured, you if you had won your conference or finished as a higher seed, you had a home court advantage. And uh, and I just think I think that's a great reward for uh, someone that has done what we ultimately all strive for in the regular season. That's winning or sharing a conference championship. So it, it, I think the whole thing, Nick, will be different. We played in a neutral uh, the COVID year uh, when we played the tournament in North Florida. We played North Alabama in the finals. Uh, but other than that, I think in the last, well, five of the last six years, uh, we played at Radford, at Lipscomb, home against Lipscomb and then neutral floor, North Florida, and then at Kennesaw uh, last year. So, you know, our, our group is pretty battle-tested. You know, I, I like the the experience that we have going into the season because uh, not only have they played together, but they experienced hard games together and been victorious in a lot of those. But I do think there's a such a different dynamic in playing on a neutral floor. If we're fortunate enough to be a one or two seed and advance and get a day off, I think there's a slight advantage in A, rest, and B, preparation. Uh, but that whole, like, who knows how many people will be in Huntsville. And depending on your opponent, you know, uh, Western Kentucky, Jack State, Middle Tennessee, those are in much closer proximity than, than we are. But I am excited about being in Huntsville. I, I think uh, I think it's a great venue. Uh, that, that city loves basketball and uh, have shown uh, that their desire to have the postseason and – Brody Peebles is from Hartzell, not too far away, and we're hoping all the Hartzell comes out and supports Peebles and the Flames.
he played pretty well against Alabama, I remember. He scored scored quite a bit. All right, one last question for you before I let you go. Tell me a little bit about the two transfers coming in, Cade Mathidi and Xander Yates, how they'll help your team this year. Yeah, it, uh, man, we, we, this is not an area we've ventured into much, that transfer portal. We, we have taken graduate transfers, but we haven't taken guys that have had multiple years left because uh, we certainly didn't want to send a message to the guys that are currently in our program that we're recruiting over to you. I think the way uh, things fell this year with uh, Isaiah departing and then Blake going to Northwestern, uh, we had we had to get some uh, some experience, and uh, and man, did we did we ever did we ever score, Nick? Like those two kids, phenomenal families. Uh, the Yateses, uh, both Xander's mom and dad, uh, played at Liberty. Uh, mom volleyball, dad basketball, and uh, and the Matheny's unbelievable people. So uh, it's been uh, consistent or uh, commiserate with the guys that we currently have in our locker room. Uh, five-star people. And from a playing standpoint, uh, and I think they're, I think they're really good. Like Xander didn't play much at Creighton, but that was an elite eight team. And uh, I think some of the things that he does for us uh, will really be valued. I look for him to have a really good year. And, and I think Matheny might, and I haven't seen his name in, in much of the preseason publication, uh, but boy, I, I think he's going to, he's going to merit some, uh, some all this and that honors. He's he's a really really special player. So, you add that to to Colin Porter and uh, Brody Peebles and Joseph Vincent in the backcourt. Uh, I, I think all of our guys have gotten better, including Gabriel and JC. And then our, our front court depth it was already strong with Kyle and Shiloh, and uh, man Zach Cleveland's had a phenomenal spring and uh, and summer uh, and even early uh, early season fall. So I. I like our group. Bryce, we, Nick, we, this is a fun team to coach. I think it'll be a really fun team to support Flames Nation. Come out and uh, do what you always do. And we love playing for you. We love re representing Liberty. And, Nick, hopefully the one thing we're missing is getting you and your crew into Liberty Arena to come to a game. So you got you to gotta venture uh, this way if you can. I'm trying. I'm going to try to make it this year. Uh, I'll try to make that that drive down there. I can't wait. I, I've yet to go to Liberty Arena. I did get to see you guys at Bellarmine last year. That was an awesome experience. So uh, hopefully this is the year. Yeah, Grand Canyon on the ninth. That'll that'll be a really good one. Hey, you make it any time. You'll be uh, our special guest. But man, thanks for all you do for us. We we love uh, Sea of Red. And uh, man, you you do the basketball as well as anybody. Oh, uh, Coach, I appreciate it. Can't wait for the season to get started tomorrow night. Uh, best of luck this season, Coach. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you, man. Go Flames. Well, how about that? R Richie McKay. What a guy. <laughs> Special guest rolling out the red carpet for Nick Kirby. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Well, Will, I, uh, man, just can't wait for the season to get started. Obviously, tomorrow is going to be <laughs> probably more of a snooze fest. But I am excited to see, you know, you know how Matheny um, and and how Yates kind of fit in. Uh, interested to see, find out who's red shirting tomorrow. Kind of get that those answers, or maybe get those answers. They don't always tell you for sure if a player sitting is for sure red shirting, but you'll have some some good ideas for sure. Yeah, was there anything about that interview that stuck out to you as far as you know anything that was that you thought maybe was coach speak or yeah you know, i've listened to mckay on um some of the press conference stuff and um uh flame central podcast as well and you know he talks about the families of these guys a lot but that was really the first time i kind of heard him talk about the the play of the transfers and and how he would they would contribute yeah i i found that interesting as well i found it interesting how he said that you know you know, we don't really like to go to the transfer portal just because we don't want to, you know, we want to make sure our guys feel uh, supported. You know, that that really stood out to me when he said that. And um, I, I did find that interesting. I'm trying with McKay. I, I, I watch just about every press conference he does. I yeah. try to come up with questions where I, I, I won't get those. I try to steer away from the coach speak. Uh, you got to know which questions to ask. I still sometimes get baited and do a coach speak answer. Uh, but you know, like, like, like he's, there's a reason, the, the reason he's as good as yeah. he is, is because he knows how to handle these. Like, he's not going to go and say something stupid that right. is going to, you know, uh, backfire and hurt a recruit or hurt a current player or, 
or, or whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I just can't wait for the season to get started. Um, Will, you got any other final thoughts? I wrote this down earlier. I, right. I, I said this for uh, football season, but I think it applies to basketball season. This is my, this is Pastor Will's three point sermon for basketball season right here. All right, hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. You need I'm to take notes. You need I'm, to no, 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 anything. No, or? no. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna intro with this. <laughs> All right. Three point sermon. Number one, and this I'm a Baptist, so these all are alliterative, okay? Uh, gravity. C- CUSA is a step up, dare I say a leap up in competition. Chad alluded to it. We are not going into high school gyms anymore here. There, and, and I fully expect that there's going to be growing pains along the way, Um uh, but these boys are going to have to bring it. I mean, there are not any Stetsons or Central Arkansas on this schedule um, for conference play. So I think, you know, there's a gravity to to this season. Um, number two, gratitude. Dude, how thankful are you that we are, like, at this point? Uh, we are in the Conference USA. And, and I know it's not the Conference USA of, of old. I remember when the Conference USA started – um, you know, back in the the probably what mid nineties or so, and some of those teams are now AAC or whatever. Um, but you know, we we've said all along that this is probably a one bid seed, uh, a, a one bid league. Um, but who knows? Could be two bid uh, if if the chips fall, you know, the right way. Um, but. Let's just enjoy the ride, man. Let's be thankful that that we're at this point. We've got Coach McKay and his staff um, leading the way, which leads to point number three, gladness. Excited for the golden age of Liberty Athletics. Again, glad that we've got Richie McKay as our coach. Um, he's got these dudes in convocation three times a week. I just know he does. And uh, as Nick, as far as for me and you, we are back, baby. It is basketball season, and I'm glad about that. We are back. Can't wait for it. Uh, we'll. I think we'll, we're looking at maybe Sunday night next week. We'll for sure let you know when we're going to come back on. We'll come on sometime after the Charlotte game before the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Um, we'll, we'll do a show kind of recapping, um, um, you know, how the – really probably just talk about the Charlotte game and, and kind of our expectations and kind of previewing uh, the Myrtle Beach Invitational. But, yeah. Just can't wait to get it started. Looking forward to watching some other Conference USA basketball, seeing kind of how this league looks. And uh, I'll leave you with this. If you're looking for some some betting advice for tomorrow, Duquesne minus nine and a half. That's your play. That's your play on opening day. Uh, well, Will, it's great to be back with you, my friend. Uh, can't wait to do this again. Go Flames. Go Flames.